First of all, I'd like to thank Neil Gilman for giving me the opportunity um, to be here this evening. Certainly uh, not only honored, but feel privileged to be able to stand in front of uh, my peers. I think that uh, in the time that I've been coaching, uh, both in the college level and a professional level, uh, whatever I've been able to achieve basically is the result of people like yourselves uh, who have been willing to share uh, ideas and concepts uh, with me. Uh, not that you take everything that uh, you hear or see, but basically I think if you have an open mind, every encounter that you have with someone uh, who's doing something similar to what you're doing, and I think that regardless of what offense or style of offense I should say you're in, if you're an offensive line coach, you're doing an awful lot of similar things. Uh, and any time that you can get somebody to sit down and talk with you, any time that you can sit and listen, uh, I think it's beneficial. And it's obviously, uh, I'm always reminded of something that I heard years ago. Um, the trouble with knowing everything is that you can't learn anything new. And I really believe that what we do, coaching in itself, but particularly as far as the offensive line is concerned, uh, is an evolutionary thing. In other words, it's always uh, evolving. And so no matter how successful you are, how satisfied you are with your system, all right, basically, you're always looking all right, for new ideas. You're always looking for ways to improve. You're always looking uh, to build that better mousetrap, so to speak. So <clears throat> I feel uh, privileged to be able to speak with you and to share some thoughts with you this evening. Hopefully at the uh, end of the uh, presentation, uh, there'll be some kernel of uh, uh, an idea that you'll be able to take back to your program, uh, your situation, and uh, help you uh, move on. Uh, obviously, the goal for all of us uh, is to win. And you know, that's an important thing. Uh, obviously, when you win, you stay. When you lose, you go in this business. Uh, the military has uh, an acronym for everything. And I take that word, win, and I make an acronym out of it that I utilize uh, all the time, uh, whether I'm making a decision uh, relative to personnel, uh, a decision about a technique, uh, a decision about what to tell a player in a certain situation. I take that acronym, I win, and I reduce it, what's important now? Right? And, and I think that's very significant because you have a wealth of information. Let's just say, for instance, you're in a one-on-one -on -one pass protection drill, you know, and the individuals just had a difficult, all right, snap, regardless of what it might be. You know, you have a wealth of information you can tell them. But I think that the, the most important thing is to say to yourself, hey, what does he need to hear at this time that will help him with the next snap? And, and when you're looking at a play or you're looking at a technique, all right, uh, it doesn't make any difference uh, how much you know or how good the overall scheme is. It's what you communicate. And a lot of times, all right, we try to communicate too much. All right, over the period of time, you can get the message out. At that moment, all right, what you have to say to yourself is, what's important now? What must I do or say at this moment all right, that will allow us to clear the next hurdle? And last but not least, obviously we all have our own styles of coaching. And I think that it's beneficial to understand two things. Number one, it's okay all right, to be yourself. You can take a look at people and you can say, hey man, I like their, I like their demeanor. I like how they coach. Fine. All right, that's not you. That's not your demeanor. Might you be able to gather all right, something of his style that will help you? Yes. Sometimes uh, 
learning not what not to do is better than learning what to do. All right, but be yourself. And the other thing is, all of us, all right, are in a system. Uh, occasionally, you're the offensive line coach, and you may also be the offensive coordinator, and, and you can package everything. And so you're doing it your way, hopefully. Um, most of us aren't that fortunate in that respect. Uh, fortunate may be a, a poor choice of words. The point I'm trying to make is most of us all right, are in a system all right, that's uh, being dictated all right, by someone else, a head coach or a coordinator. You may have some influence, but generally speaking, here's the package, and you've been told to implement it. Well, within that implement, implementation of the system, uh, you I, are going to be teaching I, some fundamental things. And I think it's important I, for you to establish a system. A system is nothing more than your approach, your ABC, so to speak, on how you're going to take the player all right, and take him from this spot to that spot in terms of improving his proficiency, improving the effectiveness of the system. And I think it's very important all right, that you think about what your style is. It's very important what you think about your system and how you're going to implement this offense. And I think the, the last thing I'll say in terms of this type of uh, coaching philosophy as it pertains to uh, an offensive line coach, I just simply say this to you. The most important goal all right, that we can achieve, regardless of how masterful all right, the system is, all right, you have to understand two things. All right, number one, all right, can the player do what you're asking him to do? And if he can't do what you're asking him to do, all right, obviously many of us are in situations at that time you can't get a better player. You can't get another player. All right, so what you have to be able to do is modify what you're doing to his ability. To me, that's what really coaching is all about. Particularly as we relate in this room, offensive line coach, man, I got a guy or I have five guys. Hey, I could have an, an, a great system. I could have a great design. But if they can't, because of their ability, if they can't execute it and you don't have an alternative, then coach, that's what you do. You have to be able to adjust to what they do. And the other thing I think we have to always keep in mind, don't kid yourself. All right, regardless of all right, your presentation uh, in the meeting room, all right, your game plan as a staff, all right, uh, your work on the field and trying to implement those things, when it's all said and done, we have an expression all right, at Tampa Bay, all right, you are what you see on film. And when you look at that tape and what you're teaching, all right, what your design is isn't showing up, all right, then basically you got a problem. All right, you got a problem in communication in most cases. All right, they don't understand or they can't get it done. Adjust. The two most important words I think that an offensive line coach all right, has to always have in the back of his mind, all right, because I think this is what dictates your success, you have to be able to improvise and adjust. The INA rule, I call it, improvise and adjust. Now, our conversation today is going to be specifically about pass protection. Uh, obviously, having been in the National Football League, uh, the emphasis on throwing the ball is large. Probably very few college offenses emphasize the pass or see the degree of sophistication defensively to defend the pass, all right, as we do. 
Uh, I think that um, it's an excellent topic. Uh, what we're going to talk about might not be for everybody, but I sort of like to take you through a progression. All right, again, a system, if you will, uh, one that uh, has evolved for me, all right, and I believe all right, has allowed us to have uh, some degree all right, of proficiency. Obviously, uh, the key component in pass protection is right, giving a quarterback enough time to throw the ball. That's an understatement. But that's all about rhythm. It's all about the design that allows the pass offensive system all right, to have rhythm. All right, because I really believe this, although, and you, I'm sure, have experienced all right, the same frustrations uh, that I have, you know, being in an offensive staff room, all right, and uh, if the ball's throwing well, all right, it's because the quarterback threw it well, the receiver ran a wonderful pattern, and he caught it, all right, but if on the very next snap, there's a protection issue, all right? It's about protection, all right? When many times the rhythm of the quarterback is affected, all right, by the speed of the receiver, all that incrementally puts more pressure on the protection. I think it's important to understand that there's certain nuances about drop back protection, all right? And, and as long as you have developed a system all right, then I think you're in good shape and being able to adjust. You may not all right, do the things that we do, all right, but I think some of the things that we do may lend themselves all right, and generate some thoughts for you. Now, I'm very fundamental oriented, and I think that the first place I'll start is to ask answer, I should say, all right, some basic questions that I have heard uh, asked me repeatedly as I uh, talk to offensive line coaches, all right, uh, number one, what kind of stance do you use? I think it's very important. I think uh, that there is a formula, a standard, if you will, but I really think that Stances are like fingerprints. Uh, each individual's physical characteristics uh, dictate a slight modification. But generally speaking, uh, I'm going to talk about a balanced uh, stance. By that I mean uh, equal weight distribution. I don't want it to be significantly uh, forward or back relative to what the particular play or task of the of the court of the uh, offensive lineman is uh, so we're obviously conscious of watching all right the stance and making sure that it's balanced here's one item all right that relates to the physical characteristics of the player usually height leg length all right i like a toe instep stagger all right when you're taking a look at the uh offensive lineman I, I think that the stagger can go anywhere from the inset, instep to the heel. I think once it gets as deep as the heel, all right, uh, then you begin to have some problems change of direction-wise. Right? I think the stagger can be a little bit deeper all right, for an offensive tackle, all right, particularly all right, uh, when he has an uh, outside tight rusher. Basically, I'm oriented to being in a right-handed stance on the right side and a left-handed stance uh, on the left side simply because I think that puts you in the best uh, position pass protection-wise. Right? Uh, hey, I had a great offensive lineman who I worked with uh, early in my career as in the Hall of Fame by the name of John Hanna. Might be the best offensive guard that ever played in the National Football League. And he was a left guard. All right, and he was in a right-handed stance. So obviously it can be done. Uh, I think it's a lot more efficient all right, that when you're in the uh, left side all right, uh, or the right side, all right, that outside foot stagger, as we'll talk about sets versus alignments, I think it's very good. 
uh, advantage? Uh, do I think that it's necessary? If you're not a big drop back pass team, all right, uh, and uh, most of us, especially in National Football, are a little bit more right-handed oriented than running. So if you're going to be in a zone or a scheme package, all right, having that outside foot staggered helps. Uh, but all things being equal, I would say uh, parallel stance, all right, uh, is something all right, that's acceptable. All right, particularly when I have a right-handed player, a right-sided player going left, or a left-sided player going right, and he has a hard inside pick and jab type cutoff in the inside gap, we'll many times go from a stagger stance to a parallel stance to enable him to open that inside foot. Generally speaking, I think this uh, bears some conversation. All things being equal, we're going to be in a three-point stance. During an obvious passing situation, all right, I'm going to allow the tackles to get into a two-point stance. All right, a two-point stance and a stagger with their outside foot and knowing the starting count should be a huge advantage in pass protection. However, I prefer in obvious passing situations that the guards be in a two-point stance, all right, or excuse me, a three-point stance because I think that it gives them a better power position to be in, all right, and I like the delivery of the punch from their three-point stance. However, things have gotten very sophisticated uh, on our level. People are trying to do a lot of disguises and late shifts and movement on defense in third down situations. And I, I have found that the guards are more comfortable seeing from a two-point stance than a three-point stance. But if it's a perfect world, obvious passing situation, other than having those three inside people, the two guards in the center, all right, they're done, all right, I'm interested, all right, in mirror positioning and power punching, and the tackles, obviously, all right, they have the more difficult job, all right, in terms of the upfield outside speed type rusher. Uh, this is something that I haven't done a lot of until just the last couple of years. Uh, in short yardage and goal line situations, uh, basically, I'm gravitating to a four-point stance uh, just simply because I love the demeanor that it echoes. Uh, I love being able to come out on a speed break, get down in a four-point stance, man. Hey, it's third and inches. It's first and goal to go on a one-yard line. Hey, and I want us to line up, all right, like we're seven, 18-wheelers, and we're rolling down an interstate, and you just better get ready to get your doors rocked. So I, I like it from that standpoint. One of the things that I think is neglected, all right, is the adjustments all right, that you can utilize advantageously relative to your splits. When I say the best is two feet, I mean that from a uniformity standpoint, all right, we're a little bit different than a lot of people. Uh, we'll come up and get down in a three-point stance immediately out of the huddle. All right, so generically, we start with two feet split. I think a two-foot a two split is an excellent generic split. All right, you can do what you need to do from there. My key point to you is simply this, all right, is that it's the offensive guards, all right, that can adjust in or out, all things being equal, all right, they're going to work with the center, they're going to work with the tackle, they can do the adjustment. Generally don't like the tackles to adjust, with one exception, all right, if we're in a slide-type pass protection, and I think that is a, a, a nice issue, if we're in a slide-type pass protection, uh, I'll let the tackle to the slide side extend the split all right, to a yard, all right? And that is simply to extend the edge all right, for the defending rusher, all right? So if I can get that outside rusher all right, wider, and obviously, we're sliding, so his inside is protected all right, by the offensive guard. So that's one element. 
The other element is when we're running the ball off tackle, particularly against a 34 team or a 25 team, an under team, all right, 25 is our term for an under. In other words, it's an onside guard bubble, all right, and I will often max the tackle split to a yard because that will give him a great indicator of whether the defensive end is going to cross his face. Difficult for the end to stay on a wide five or a five if he's going to come across the face, all right, and if he does, all right, we ought to have a little bit of time to see it. I'm trying to force him to give us a pre-snap declaration. Obviously, all right, item number three here, in a short yardage situation, we'll reduce our splits to one foot. In a goal line situation, we'll reduce our split to six inches. The reason here is obvious. All right, when you get in short yardage and goal line situations, you're expecting the defense all right, to be in a gap penetrating mentality all right, or be slashing, moving, all right, trying to create some havoc. Uh, what we want to do is make sure that the gaps all right, are to our advantage, not the defense's advantage. All right. Last but not least in terms of getting all right, some fundamental stance splits, alignment on, off, or back. Very, very, very neglected in my opinion. Uh, obviously, what is normal, all right, what is normal would be, all right, that we're going to line up, all right, there's a crew drawing right here, all right, but I'm going to have the guards and the tackles, all right, under normal alignment, I'm going to have them put their don hand at the tip, all right, or near the tip as much as they can uh, perceive it, of the shoe of the center, all right, the foot of the center to his side. So our normal alignment is fingertips on the toes of the center, all right? Uh, now, why do we move on, all right? Well, on, all right, if this is the football right here, all right, they'll let you get to that football tip all right, sometimes these officials, all right, uh, that's one thing that they may even let you cheat a little bit on. All right, why do we want to get on? Number one, I tell our offensive linemen, hey, we want to get on the ball when the defense is off. A lot of times the defenders, all right, are going to be in a, what we refer to as a flex position. They're off the ball by a foot. Well, if they're off the ball foot, let's crowd the line of scrimmage, number one. All right, number two, we got a three-step drop. It's an aggressive mentality for us. I want to engage the defender as soon as I possibly can. Number two, all right, regardless of our drop, you're a guard and you have a power-type, bull-type rusher. Another reason why you should be on the ball. I think that a lot of us, I know we do, have a scheme all right, where we block on the onside in some type of all right, power double team mentality, either the tackle tight end or the tackle guard, and we're pulling the offside guard. Uh, some people, all right, still pull the backside tap, tackle, all of the Redskins, power trail. All right, what I want to do is I want the onside to crowd the ball so that when the offside puller is pulling, all right, number one, it helps his vision, number two, it enables him to get downhill and take advantage all right, of the push all right, in that situation. Obviously, if we're going to double team or zone block and the center's uncovered, let's talk about those two things. Number one, you're playing some form of an even front, the center's uncovered. All right, I want the guards on the ball so that when the center is working with the guard, they're on the same level. Conversely, if there's a guard bubble and we're double teaming a shaded nose, all right, or an offset nose, I want the guard on the ball so they're on the same level. So I think there's some significant things that you can detail, all right, to give you an advantage to being on the ball. All right, the three-step, all right, uh, tight pass protection, the bold tight pass rusher, the defensive in a, in a flex position, enhancing the read of the offside pullers, by making the onside get uh, on the ball, all right, obviously zone blocking or double team blocking versus an uncovered lineman situation for the guard, all of working with, with, with the center, 
or the center uncovered working with a garden zone block situation. Uh, obviously, back ties in with, all right, stagger, all right, and ties in with split, and sometimes, all right, if the slide protection, but I, back simply means in our league, all right, and I'm not familiar with the college rules, all right, but we have a terrible problem, all right, in terms of the officials are very inconsistent, all right, but the rule book says, all right, that your helmet has to break the plane of the center's belt, all right, so that if I'm an offensive tackle in an obvious third down situations, it's an advantage to me to be back off the ball. My complaint is the inconsistency of the officials where one week they let you fudge a little bit and another week they don't. Uh, they'll warn you, all right, or they won't warn you. It used to be you could line a tackle up and he could point to the side judge, all right, and just say, am I okay? And a guy would shake his head, all right? Uh, now you point to them, they don't say anything, they may throw the flag. But that's an advantageous position, all right, in an offensive pass-oriented down and distance, all right, for the tackles to be back off the ball. All right, many times, all right, if you're seeing, all right, a TE, all right, a tackle end type game, all right, I like the guards to be on the ball and the tackles to be off the ball, all right, because it gives the tackle, all right, a chance, all right, to get, really get underneath the drive, all right, of the penetrating three. And that obviously is the key to a TE. Now, some people say, well, when you do that, you invite the ET, all right? <clears throat> obviously, uh, that's a problem, but I would, I, I expect to see a lot more TEs, and I invite the ET, all right? And uh, we, again, could adjust if that would be the situation. All right, now, moving on, basically, you have a three-step, a five-step, or seven-step mentality in your passing game. Again, I think it's about attitude, all right? And I really uh, get upset, all right, uh, when people think that anything about the passing game is finesse, all right? It's an extremely difficult, all right, uh, technique, and I think the mentality all right, that you want to develop is a, an aggressive all right, mentality, and that's the way you sell it. Now, when we're in a three-step drop, characterize that by just simply saying, hey, we're going to be firm, we're going to be aggressive. All right? We're an in-your-face team in three-step drops. Now, you are what you see on tape. I, quite frankly, don't see that in-your-face mentality enough That'll be one of my points in the offseason, all right, to try to develop a little bit better demeanor in our three-step drops. Many times, if I could equate it for you, we all know what we're talking about, I believe, when we refer to an inside zone running play. I think in many cases, in your three-step drop, if it's a pure three-step drop, by that I mean, man, it's one, two, three, boom, ball's coming up. Now, some three-step drop offenses it's one, two, three, look over here, and if that's covered, all right, reset and throw over here. Well, you got to change your mentality a little bit there, all right? But if it's a three-step drop and you know the ball's coming out in rhythm, I want an in-your-face mentality. I do not like the cut right off the set, but I love to finish with the cut block, all right, in this situation. The biggest problem that you have here in three-step is tackles versus width. All right, they're always a little nervous about getting inside, and you have to practice that. You know, we're going to talk here in just a few minutes about drills. And, I, and, and let me just say this, because I think it's a significant point at this time, is that everybody's always, and I am too, don't get me wrong, all right? Everybody's always interested in, hey, coach, what are you doing? What, new, what drills are you doing? All right? Uh, everybody's looking for new drills. You know, I, I, I've come full circle on this. Uh, obviously, I'm always interested in what you're doing. I'm looking for new drills that might benefit. But sometimes I lose sight of the fact that the best drill is to simply take the player out, put him in a situation that he's having problems with, and repeat it, and repeat it, and repeat it. 
So I have a problem with tackles not wanting to be aggressive enough on a three-step drop. So one of my drills is going to be take them out. It's three-step drop. Put them on the outside shoulder. Put a little wider defender. All right, and then put them out at about a yard and a half. Let's work on those techniques. Let's get confidence in those techniques. All right, uh, a guard versus three technique who may be a counter rusher. All right, put him in that situation. All right, often enough that he can get confidence in the technique. Don't just say, hey, all right, three step drop. We're going to be aggressive, fire out, attack these guys. A lot of times they don't understand. All right. And a lot of times they don't have confidence in doing that, all right, because, hey, they just had a third and four situation, a third and five situation. This guy just made a hard inside move on him, or they ran a TE. How do you deal with that? All right, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Five step, all right, it's a short set. But what I mean by a short set is, all right, basically in a five step drop, I like the offensive line to be in a off the ball position. All right, an off the ball position, all right, and aggressively cut off the defender. The off ball position allows me, all right, at moment, all right, to react to the defense's charge, and then I want to be in a position where I aggressively take them off. This is, in my opinion, a rhythm punch. Talk about punches in a little bit. It's a set, all right. Punch, set, punch, set, punch. If I'm the tackle and I have width, I might not get a punch, all right, but I get a cutoff. If you can redirect, force the defensive end to redirect, ball gone. So that's why I say this is a key point right here, all right? It's a rhythm punch. Uh, I've given a lot of thought to this over the years, and I'm not exactly sure all right, uh, why I evolved into this, uh, but on a seven-step drop, again, if it's a seven-step rhythm throw, quarterback's going to hit, all right, on a seven-step, he's going to get hit his depth, and then he's going to, all right, come back up into the pocket. I really believe, all right, you don't make any adjustments with your center and or guards. Obviously, the adjustment, all right, versus a seven-step drop, all right, all right, by that QB has got to be by the tackles, all right, relative to, all right, the defensive ends alignment. All right, I think that's the most significant thing. Yes, the ball is going to be held, all right, fractionally longer, all right, uh, but I don't believe, all right, that it, it should affect, all right, what the centers and guards are doing. All right, the tackles have to be aware of it. Their mentality on a five-step drop is cut them off, all right, force a collision, all right, and if the end redirects, ball's gone. Now we got to force a collision, all right, and we have to adjust and sustain, all right, and I, th I think that's, it. that's the key point right there. Now, when you're teaching pass protection, I think the most important thing, all right, to emphasize, all right, is position, all right, and patience, all right, you know, hey, you got to understand, all right, what profile, all right, the rusher's presenting you based upon his alignment. Normally, all right, there's only a, a, a list of things that they do from certain alignments, and you have to be able to anticipate that. Number one is the inside alignment. All right, when I'm dealing with an inside alignment, all right, basically, all right, I want to protect that inside gap with what I call a power step. Remember, if that's a right, all right, if that's a right-handed player, all right, I'm going to have that right foot up, uh, left foot up, excuse me. And what I want to make sure that I'm doing is that I want to take a hard, all right, power step with that inside foot, all right. But I always want to remain in a position, all right, where my, all right, helmet, all right, never gets inside a head up. I want to maintain a position of, all right, if this podium right here was the inside rusher, and as I step, all right, I want to maintain a position inside half on outside half, hands on, okay? Because most of the time, all right, they want me to overset because they're going to come back to the outside. 
All right, in, in our business, that alignment right there normally is a tip-off, all right, that they're getting ready to try to set you up, all right, for the, all right, end, all right, tackle game, all right? And I say to, all right, the offensive line, set firm in the inside gap, make them show you their intent, all right? Don't step up. You don't want to be too aggressive. In some cases, all right, depending upon the characteristic, all right, of the defense, all right, I'm going to emphasize this power step now, all right, but understand you're pushing off your outside foot, all right, and you want to get your hand, if you're looking for a specific contact point, it's peck and shoulder, it's peck and shoulder. I'll show you a drill that we have for that. Now, if the defender gets head up, all right, whether he's at the guard position or the tackle position, all right, the indicators are more likely a tackle. All right, when he's at the tackle position, the indication of the head up alignment all right, is inside movement. Not necessarily true at guard, but number one, if the man is head up, simple as it sounds, all right, but elementary all right, is what you got to coach. All right? Shortest distance between two points is still a straight line. There's your quarterback. Protect it. All right, so if the man is head up, I'm going to take a short all right, jab step with my inside foot all right, so that I have some all right, advantage all right, if he's on an inside move. The most important thing when he's on an inside move, all right, whether he is on an inside move all right, to run a all right, TT, or he's on an inside move to set up an outside rush if he's a defensive end, the most important thing is to flatten him. And again, as he goes inside, it all becomes relative all right, to the alignment if it were specifically an inside alignment to begin with. Don't get your head in front. Stay in that outside shoulder and that near peck, all right? and that's why you spend all that time in the weight room to have the strength to push him flat. All right, because as soon as you get in front of the inside movement, all right, that's when they recover back to the outside. So I think it's relative. All right, obviously, the next point ties up with an outside alignment, and that's just simply this. If I set slightly to the inside, and it's only a slight set to the inside, it's about a four to six inch step, and now he chooses to rush outside, it's no different than if he were in an outside alignment to begin with, a shaded outside alignment. All right, got a normal outside alignment, which just simply means his inside shoulder is on your outside shoulder. Generally speaking, this is the ideal position to be in. All right, you are all right, sitting in a, and this is one of the reasons why the staggered stance all right, is an advantage. All right, you basically are sitting in the most advantageous position you can be in. My point here is get up out of your stance as quickly as you possibly can. I often, right, and, and uh, I'll reflect on this in, in, in uh, a moment, when we look at tape later on, I'll try to point it out to you, but I often, I know we all get uh, carried away, right, and, and because we got a time element when we're watching tape, uh, so, you, hey, if you can go to the end zone, you go to the end zone tape as soon as you can. In, in pass protection, I like to look at the sideline right, for this reason. Two reasons, really. I want to see who's getting their hands up. When you come out of your stance, how fast are you getting your hands up? And the only way you can see that is on a sideline tape. And here's the key versus an outside alignment. You're up and out of your stance, all right, and you got to make sure you're getting your hands up quick, all right? You're up and out of your stance, you gotta get your hands up quick. If you're late with your hands, disadvantage you, all right? So I think that's an important point. The other reason why I look at the sideline in our passing offense is that when that quarterback throws the ball, does he have enough room to follow through? You know, if you're getting pushed right back and he can't follow through, all right, then you may be blocking your mind, and man, and in your mind you're doing a good job, but we got to have all right, that area in front of the quarterback. All right, that's, that area right there belongs to the offense. And you can't get pushed back in it. 
And, and, and again, if all you're looking at is end zone, you don't see those two things. Again, all right, the outside alignment. Maintain, all right, an inside out position. We all have different ways of saying it. Outside shoulder and inside shoulder, all right. All right, keep your nose on the inside number. All right, keep your outside knee split in this crotch. We want to maintain, all right, that inside out position. Now, it doesn't happen uh, as often for guards. It can happen for guards, all right, but it does happen more often for tackles. How do we handle, all right, that outside alignment? First of all, let me go to this point, all right? If a guard, all right, is getting a wide, all right, a wide, all right, maybe even in a gap, it's that wide. If the guard's getting that type of alignment, all right, then basically, all right, unless we're in slide protection and the center's got his inside gap, I'll tell him in slide protection to jump to three, all right, just jump it. All right, get this side step right here, jump it, stop it right here. Most of the time when you jump the three, they're looking to come back inside on you. If it's slide protection, so what? Invite them to do that. You've done two things, man. You've killed the TE, all right? But if, all right, we don't have a slide protection, all right, and you get a wide three technique, all right, I don't know how you handle a wide three technique without incorporating a post all right, vertical set by the tackle, all right, because the guard's in really uh, a no-win situation. If he jumps to three, the three goes inside him, all right? So generally speaking, if we got that wide three, and again, a podium is a wide three, if I'm the tackle on my set, I don't affect my depth of my set, but I got that inside hand up, and I'm trying to hold that guy off, all right, with the guard as I look at the defensive end show you an example of that on tape in a little bit, all right? But normally the wider defensive alignments are, are problematic to the tackles. You got two situations here, all right? Number one, a lot of times, all right, they're going to put somebody over that tight end in a man coverage situation. The end's a little bit wider, all right? Normally when this happens, all right, I'm an advocate of the vertical set. By that I mean... I'm going to tell the tackle, all right, to take his normal kick, all right, and then vertically set. Because I believe if you go out at that wide angle, all right, your shoulders begin to open up, all right, too soon, all right, and two things happen. Either you're exposed, all right, as you come out and your shoulders open up, you're either exposed to the power rush, all right, or you're giving them an edge, man, all right? You're, you've already got that outside shoulder and outside foot parallel to the sideline. All right, he's going to rip and squeeze, all right? So I think that kicking gives you width, vertical set gives you advantage, all right? You stay inside out on that, force him to make a move, then you can ride him upfield, all right? Now, some people, all right, advocate the same vertical set all right, once this guy gets off of, all right, your shoulder, generally speaking, I say there's a cutoff point in my mind. If the defensive end is outside, all right, a yard and a half plus, I might consider that. But generally speaking, from the wider alignment, remember, we're going to get off the ball. I believe our stagger and our knowledge of the starting con helps. And so now what I'm going to tell this guy is that he's got to get to a point, all right, he's got to get to a point simply, all right, to cut off the defensive end so that the wider the rush, all right, and I'm never, ever going to turn, but the wider the rush, the deeper the kick. Another reason why, all right, your stagger and your alignment, I mentioned that before when talking about the stance, one of the advantages of, all right, having a deeper stagger, anytime you have to block a wider rusher, runner pass outside, even for that matter, a wide rush inside, all right, if I got to cut off a three technique in a zone blocking scheme, all right, that stagger, all right, is going to help me, all right, open up a little bit deeper. That's a subject for another day. So I want to cut this guy off, all 
All right, uh, I'm not as aggressive as I am on a five-step drop, obviously. All right, but I want to get to that intersecting point based upon his alignment and force him either to be a bull rusher, all right, or to widen. I win that. All right, obviously I'm protecting, all right, my inside because, as I said, I always maintain an inside opposition. Now, uh, there's a couple thoughts there on some real fundamental issues. Uh, again, what you put on tape is what you're teaching. So uh, what I'm going to try to do, all right, is that I'm going to try to develop uh, a plan in practice, all right, that is going to enable me to take those things that we just showed on paper technique-wise and employ them, all right, in, in reality. Now, let me make a couple points here. Number one, I think that, uh, and I'm not familiar, I know the majority of the men that are in the room here tonight are college coaches. Uh, I used to be one, uh, but it's been a long time ago, and the NCAA has certainly changed uh, in rules and regulations of what you can do during the offseason. One of the things that is really advantageous for us and I keep wondering how long it's going to go on before the Players Association all right, demands uh, some NCAA-type uh, regulations. But we have an off-season program all right, uh, that'll begin in March. It'll run to about two weeks before, uh, excuse me, run to about a four or five weeks before the training camp starts, you know, where I have a lot of individual opportunities to work technique. Now, just like you, when we get to a practice situation, uh, I probably have a little bit more individual period than anybody else on the team does uh, because, you know, all the passing gurus want uh, pass installation, uh, pass rots versus air. Hey, basically they say, see that corner down there? You guys have that corner. We'll see you in about 20 minutes. Sometimes it's 30 minutes. And then no matter what corner of the field you go through, they're still throwing passes. Hey, can you back up a little bit? They're still throwing passes through. you got a little square of individual grass. All right, they're still throwing balls. Hey, can you back up a little bit? All right, but I take advantage of that. Obviously, uh, I don't know how much individual time you have. Uh, I don't know how much off-season time you have. But I get an awful lot done in the off-season because I think a lot of pass protection techniques I right, don't have to be padded practices. You can get an awful lot done in shorts and t-shirts in the pass protection world. Now, ultimately, it comes down to pads. I understand that. In a running game, I don't know that you can get much done all right, in shorts and t-shirts, all right, uh, other than I'm still a great proponent of, of fundamentals. And uh, uh, I was brought up in high school and college, and I still, to this day, I use the Ray Crowther machine. All right, I'm in a Crowther machine, all right, uh, in shorts and T-shirts because I think fundamentally, all right, most of the players, all right, that I'm getting, all right, they're, they're, they don't know the essence of the explosive transition and run blocking. All right, so that's an aside. Basically, what I'm saying to you is uh, have some system that you can divide your practice time between, all right, uh, pass protection, all right, development, and run blocking development. Generally speaking here, I'm going to give you a little bit of an idea. These are everyday drills. This is pass protection in season. These are everyday drills, all right? Uh, I do a little bit of agility. I'll show you every day, all right? I start with a bag drill or a cone drill uh, for foot quickness, body control, and balance. I think what you really have to uh, tell yourself over and over again my little note up here in the corner, I don't know whether you can see it. You can go uh, crazy, all right, uh, with agility drills. You want to get agility uh, and you want to get the benefits of agility drills, do it in the off-season program. Have a specific limited routine that you do every day during the season. But don't get carried away with these uh, agility drills, all right, because they take time away from what's really important. Remember the acronym, WIN? What's important now? All right, what's important now is you really need to do what you need to do for that week. All right, and so that's what my emphasis is. 
I, I love the mirror drill. I think the mirror drill is probably the most significant thing that you can do, I, A, to evaluate a person's ability to pass protect, and B, I, to help them develop I, their pass protection skills. Um, we will do some hand drills on a daily basis. I try to do them all right, rapidly, all right, the seven-man sled, for me, makes it easier to do them quickly with more people, all right, but uh, uh, when we have a light practice day on Fridays or Saturdays, all right, uh, you know, and, and there's a special teams period, whatever, I'll get them together, all right, one-on-one. -on -one. We usually don't have pads on. We'll work on hand response, all right, that's karate kid, wax on, wax off. I'll show you that in a minute. All right, we do a little mirror drill where we're shooting target. All right, uh, we'll step and strike, a little pass set drill. All right, we got a ping pong drill, which just means we're going to get them to move their feet. We're going to hit Big Bertha. Now, we don't do all six of these things in any one day. I might do all six of them in the off season sometimes. All right, but, you know, it's it, what do they need? You know, what am I seeing on tape that I'd like to get a little bit of improvement on? All right, and uh, obviously, uh, when we work during the regular season, all right, we'll have two days of one-on-one -on -one pass protection and we'll, we'll, against the defense, and we'll have two days of two-on-two -two or five-on-four where we can work line stunts, all right? Uh, which brings me to two points, all right? And I don't know that you have any control over this, and if you do, I would encourage you to do it. Number one, uh, the, the offense uh, of passing gurus love pass skeleton. You know, where the quarterback is up there and they run the routes and every pass is a completion, right? But I think that you need and the quarterback needs team pass. I think that one-on-one -on -one pass protection, all right, once you get out of the preseason or the early season, and you're developing their skills of one-on-one -on -one pass protection. I think it's important, but I think it loses, just my own personal opinion, I think it loses its value, all right, once you get past, all right, that emphasis of fundamentals, set, relative position, hands, punch. Now I think you need to do it in a team concept. When you do it in a team concept, it changes the mentality of the rusher. It makes it a more realistic situation. All right, I think the quarterback needs to feel, as I call it, all the thunder and lightning going around him so that he really gets a all right, timer going on all right, in his mind in terms of how much time he has or doesn't have. All right, number two, the time that you are allowed to be working against the defense in a live pass rush situation is best service doing line stunt pickup. In a perfect world for me, once we leave training camp during the regular season, all I want to do is line stunt pickup. If I'm having a player, and I think it is, it is realistic right, to equate it, right, it's realistic to equate pass protection rhythm with a baseball swing, a golf swing. Some of these guys will lose their rhythm during the course of the season. You know, then, you know, that's what pre-practice and post-practice is for. Uh, as we talk about that, I say this to you, all right, I have uh, the ability that maybe some of you don't have, excellent video people, all right, and so what we'll do when we do the one-on-one -on -one pass rush, we'll make individual reels. So if all of a sudden the guy's losing the rhythm of his punch, I can sit down with him and look at his one-on-one -on -one pass rushes from July and say, all right, hey, man, see, all of a sudden, you're not doing this for some reason. You didn't duck your head before, all right? Uh, you didn't kick with that little push off the outside foot before. Uh, so I think that's important. But I think those are two really significant points I'd like to make to you. Uh, number one, have team pass instead of seven on seven. Number two, don't waste, and I don't know that waste is the right word, don't spend a lot of time on one-on-one -on -one pass rush drills once the season starts. Your time is best spent versus line stun pickup. It's become very sophisticated these days. And normally you have to get together right, with the 
defensive line coach and say, all right, hey, we got a 20-minute period. I'll do what you want for 10 minutes. Give me what I need for 10 minutes. Uh, in review, just fundamentally, when you set your drills up, when you set your practice up, what you're trying to do is you're trying to de develop a pass protection demeanor, all right? And that is an aggressive style, all right? You don't want it to be passive. You want it to be aggressive with the punch and the cutoff mentality. All right, you're going to teach them position, the patience of waiting for the punch. All right, the slide and react to what the defender is going to do. All right, and I call it, it's not original with me, somebody else uh, 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 used the term and I liked it, but you just got to develop hand sensitivity. All right, the punch is one thing. But the defense is not going to sit there and let you punch them all day long. They got counter moves, all right? And and you got to begin to develop a sense of response, all right, to those counter moves. Now I talked to you about doing some form of agility drills every day. You may do this uh, to warm up before uh, uh, stretch starts, all right? Or this, I will do this alternate days. I have two footwork deals. We will do this drill here. All right, at least every other day, I put seven bags down. They're approximately a yard apart. And, and what we're going to do is we're just going to stride through it. I think it's really important that you've got to get big guys used to lifting their feet and clearing all right, obstacles. Now, the second part of it is I get a little a wider base, try to emphasize more bend all right, in the hips, knees, and ankles and make it more of a run demeanor drill going through here. All right, elbows tight, accentuating, all right, the pump of the arms. All right, coming back, I wish he was a little bit lower. All right, a little wider base. All right, and then what we do is we turn and we have him face. Remember, this is a pass protection drill, not an agility drill. I have him come down. All right, emphasis here is, all right, near leg, all right, near leg, near back, high step it, clear the herb, keep the shoulders square. I don't like the tilt here. I also would like him to have his hands up front, all right, looking downfield a little bit better. All right, coming back the same way. All right, near foot, near foot, near foot, near foot, clear the back. It's a pass protection drill. It's not an agility drill, all right? I'm not interested in how fast he goes over here. Obviously, we're not going to do it slow motion-wise, all right, but I want him to clear the bag. now. Here's a, a variation you can do with this. You can give them old sandbags, 25, 35 pounds. Gilman has them. All right, you can get them from Gilman Sports. All right, right here. And then I have them do the same thing, simulating the punch. All right, and uh, have another little variation of it you'll see later on. All right, simulate the punch. But the, the most important thing is, here's what I'm trying to get them to do. See that foot right there? Clear, 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 clear. Clear, 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 clear. All right, that's very important. You know, now, uh, it's old linebacker drill, but again, here, you do dual reads in pass protection. All right, you want to teach them to push back off the line of scrimmage. This is really just, again, big men, all right, and you got to make them, all right, use their feet. All right, and basically, that's all I'm trying to do. Get them to slide. Key points here is don't round. I want them to slice off square here be able to change their weight distribution as they come along. And obviously, you can imagine having your line of offensive linemen doing this. The last thing I'll do, I do it two at a time, not one at a time, put them in a hole. Seven bags, if you want to know. I got seven bags up here. They're a yard apart, all right? Slightly more than a yard apart, all right? And what I do is the drill that you had them uh, doing, all right, one side down and the ones, now I put them in the middle and I do a true, all right, wave drill. So they got to clear the bags, all right? Not a very good start there. Randy Thomas plays for Washington Redskins. Now he's a second-round pick of the New York Jets out of Mississippi. Very good athlete. And that's all I wanted to do. I'm back here, all right, giving them directions, all right? And I want them feet moving, work. That's it, work near foot. Keep shoulder square, work near foot, all right? Keep feet moving, work near foot. Shoulder square, work near foot. Again, there's the finish. Now. Here's the second element. I'll do one of these two things every day. All right, and the second element is I put these cones, again, these cones are a little bit too close, all right? But all I do is I, I work them through their sets, all right? Shoulders square, shuffle your feet, don't bring your feet together, all right?
Get them used to working. Don't bring your feet together. See, I was clicking his heels in there. All right, keep the shoulders square. All right, and we do that. All right, then we'll go side to side. Here's your three technique. All right, there you go. All right, just shuffle them side to side. When you clear the cone, plant your outside foot. All right, you know, you're teaching them the demeanor of the pass set. All right, you got the kick for the cutoff. And now, you know, change the direction. Plant that outside foot. When you clear the cone, change it all right, with suddenness. All right, and then I have them face me. I'll be on this edge right here. All right, and we all do, we all do dual reads. All right, so what we want him to do, all right, I want him to be looking down here. I don't want him to be looking at his feet. I want him to be looking at me, all right, and setting, all right, again, feel the cones and change. Feel the cones and change. As I said, these are a little too close together, all right. Uh, basically, what I wound up doing is taking three steps. I put the cones down myself. I right, take three steps. All right, now the mirror drill. Got a couple different ways to do the mirror drill. Put the two cones out five yards apart. All right. I'll do it with hands and without hands. I'll show it to you later on without hands. Uh, I really uh, don't want a lot of contact. All right. Uh, I want it back and forth. And I want him to keep that central location without reaching. All right. We're we'll right backing up. Now, next thing I'll do is, all right. It's another form of mirror drill. All right. He actually needs to lean a little bit harder against him, but it's a hand replacement thing. All right, basically all I want him to do, all right, is just be turning from shoulder to shoulder, all right, so that your hands are getting knocked down. Two things here. All right, number one, if you're leaning, all right, if you're leaning, all right, with enough weight forward, we'll do this off also with our eyes shut. You ought to be able to anticipate his direction just by releasing pressure. All right, number two, all right, the hands are going to come off because of the spin, all right, so it's replacement. And you're teaching them to replace on, all right, a narrow target and a chest or back, which would be a wider target. You don't want him to back up while he's doing this. All right, he ought to be able to do this in this plane right here. All right, I think it's a very good drill. All right, I think it's a very realistic drill. It complements, all right, it complements the uh, mirror drill very well. Uh, it's easy to get into and get out of. All right. Uh, Again, lean into them, all right? You want to stay parallel to that line of scrimmage, just a little better lean right here than the last man, all right? David Laverne, all right, there from San Jose State, all right? Last play with the St. Louis Rams, all right? J.P. Machado from Oklahoma State, all right? Uh, and now, we'll work on this. This is hand replacement, all right? Basically, this is what I was talking about before. Knock them down, all right, bring them up. Knock them out. Side to side. This is that hand sensitivity thing, all right? And we just, you know, you're going to teach the punch, all right? They got counter moves, and really the idea is replacement. Most of the time, I think this is a little bit more applicable, all right, to guards and centers, all right, uh, because they see a little bit more of it, all right? But, you know, we've broken down each of these techniques uh, in terms of the punch and each of uh, these counter moves. And, and basically, I'm giving them an opportunity to put all these together. I like this. I do this during the regular season. All right. You want to teach punch. All right. And you want to teach set all relative position here. This is, imagine this is a left guard. There's his left stagger. This is an inside technique. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm teaching the technique I want. And I'm saying, hey, don't think of this as a continuation. This is a set. All right. Three inside techniques, all right, rather than three continuous back. Set, punch, set, punch. The key to it is the bagman. Be shoulder to shoulder. As soon as he comes off of that bag, step up. All right, you don't want to teach bad habits. You don't want the defensive, all right, to force the, a blocker to be reaching. So uh, there's an example. All right, now here we go. All right, this is a, again, left-handed stance. All right, and this is a left guard versus a three technique or an outside shoulder technique. All right, so we're setting. Bang, bang, bang. All right, you know, you want them to lose. All right, no ground. All right, remember, this is, is set punch versus a three. Repeated three times. It's not an extended rush. All right, later on, I'll change the drill, particularly for the tackles, and I'll have him extend his kick. All right, but right now, what we've done is we've taken that inside move all right, that's an alignment I just showed you. We're taking an outside alignment, all right, and, and we have, 
All right, work the technique. All right, we have worked the technique. Now here's a right tackle. All right, versus inside alignment, a four eye. And what I like about this is, all right, not stepping parallel with that inside foot, not hammering it on the ground. All right, opening up a little bit too much. All right, but that's a right tackle technique. All right, I'll set them over here. Here's a right tackle versus a five. All right, set, set again. He's thinking, all right, too much of it is being a continuation. I want to set, I want to kick a little bit more weight on that outside foot. I want this to be a pass set versus a five technique repeated three times, not the extension of a rush, all right? But you're able to get that done. Now, we're big on this, all right, right here, just trying to get them in the right position, all right? It's a good football position, all right? Uh, Jim McNally, I'm sure you've all seen uh, work at one time or another, or been one of his ca camps or clinics. This is his duck demeanor. I think it's really important. I try to put that particularly early part of the season in everything we do. It has relative to pass protection, run blocking. All right, I get him in that position. I'm going to take him side to side. I'm going to take him front to back. Uh, you guys all know. Uh, basically what we're trying to get done here probably do something like that yourself but I do a lot of it early in the season and particularly in the uh, in our off-season program trying to develop that demeanor uh, and, it's, and it's good all right front back side to side then we take it to a wave drill now again probably don't have time to do all this during the regular season I have done this during the race season. I used to do it with volleyballs some people do a little bigger balls, they do it softballs, all right? And you get a little idea what I'm trying to get done here. This is an instructional rep right here. You see it full speed. I got these softballs and I start it tight and then each one's a little bit wider, all right? But what we're trying to do is keep that demeanor, keep that bend in here, all right? Here you got a little quicker look. There it is, keep your head up, keep moving, a stretch. All right, each one goes a little bit wider. I want to try to stretch. All right, I do this. Again, it's off season. You're about a yard away. All right, have enough softballs in front of you so that you don't have to be chasing the balls. All right, it's a pretty good job right here. See how I extend them a little bit wider each time. All right, getting them to move his feet. All right, with the bend. All right, it's a big tackle, Ryan Young's with the Dallas Cowboys now. All right, feet. It's all about moving your feet. All right, not clicking your heels, all right, having a good base. All right, here we go to instructions over now. All right, a little quicker. All right, there it is. There it is, move the feet. Move the feet, there you go. Now, again, it's a little plyometric drill, but I put them on the ground. All right, these balls are available at Gilman Sports. All right, and there it is. Just stand over and drop the ball. All right, and, you know, elbows in tight, explosion. Explosion, all right. Explosion in the punch. Explosion in the punch. All right, now we'll take this, all right, and all right, we'll put the ball on the ground. All right, now here's an offensive tackle. Here's uh, coming out of his stance. You got to pick the ball up, elbows in tight, punch it out. All right, punch it out. Then I have somebody on the other side put the ball back down on the ground. Again, pick it up. All right, punch. All right, again, off season more than during the season, all right, but I will do this sometimes in training camp. All right, but the idea is, all right, again, explosiveness, all right, you're coming up out of your stance, you're getting your hands up, all right, and you're driving the punch, elbows in tight. I had once heard it uh, described that the punch uh, at a clinic as like a reverse shrug, <clears throat> all right, and I think that's a pretty good description. Now we'll do this, all right, I like them to get a little bit tighter and don't back up, stay side by side. You want to aim that ball, all right, just where your punch would be. You want it to be at the base of the numbers. Don't arc the ball, all right? Right here, watch. And again, elbows in tight, push it, push it, push it, push it, push it. Now, don't start arcing. See how I start arcing? Push it, all right? Goes to base of the number, base of the numbers. Again, now we'll go a little three-on-one drill with the ball. The balls are available in all sizes right now, all right? You like a little smaller ball? We got a little smaller ball, but here it is. Again, I'm teaching them to come up and get, get, get your hands up out of your stance. All right, elbows in tight. Here's the punch. All right, I think of this as a left guard. All right, he comes up. There's punch. All right, kick to a three. All right, now inside technique, inside technique, back eye. Three. 
All right, there you go. All right, so again, accomplishing a couple things. It's a plyometric, all right, exercise. All right, but I'm emphasizing coming up out of your stance, get your hands up. The punch, all right, the punch, all right, elbows in tight, all right, push, push. And now we're talking about right tackle, all right. He's coming out of his stance. He's going through a three technique. He comes to an inside, an inside, and a three technique. All right, I also think there's some benefit all right, to this also in terms of the line stunt work. All right, so all right, here's the right tackle. All right, again, same thing. Coming out of your stance, hand up. Three technique, inside technique, inside technique, back out to a five. All right, too hot. Keep the ball in tight right there. All right, you get the idea. Uh, again, it's for off season, it's for training camp. Here's all right, a, a non padded afternoon all right, uh, practice. All right, so I took it out to the field. All right, little, all right, they're not too close now. All right, I want it right there. I want the elbow in tight, I'll concentrate on the punch. Push it, push it, push it. All right, try to bang it in their chest. All right, inside number, inside number. All right. Right there, push it. All right, push it. All right. Usually when they drop the ball, I make them go back and do it again. That's a pretty good job by these two guys right there. All right. But there's what we're emphasizing. Elbows in tight. All right, trying to punch that thing. Now, you see he's dropping the ball. I don't want him to drop the ball. All right, the punch is a little bit too high. All right, last one was a good look right there. All right, so better. All right, you get an idea. All right, you don't want to make it too high. All right, but there's there's a value in this, all right? And again, uh, it's for a non-padded practice, all right? Uh, basically, it's for an off-season program. Uh, and again, you want to teach the punch, all right? Then that basically is uh, all right, what, what you want to get done. Now, here again is an example of in practice. Now, we changed it. There's a right tackle here, all right? So now all he's working here, all right, is he's working five technique, all the way, five technique, all right? Bang, bang. I don't like him to come back, all right? And then when he comes back in, he's working the inside technique, all right? All right. Hands, all right? So you can get a lot done with the punch, the little plyometric drill right here. Interest of time, I'll just speed this up, but you got the idea, you can slow it down. Uh, you can see, again, this was a double session afternoon. All right, practice, we did this in. All right. Now, I told you I'd show you a little no, another variation of the mirror drill. Again, uh, you got practice. You got your five-yard cones. You can do two at a time. Uh, you saw it in the indoors where we did it with the hands. Here we did it behind the back. I <clears throat> basically I like to do it with the hands more, I, uh, because I think you can get all right two things accomplished here. But but I think in pass protection, all right, and don't make this an agility drill or conditioning drill. Make it short. Make it quick. All right. And, and, I, and I, it's, it's invaluable. It might be the most singly important tool, all right, that we have in pass protection. Now, there's a good job, all right, of having them, all right, stay on the shoulder. A little bit too much chase going on here. Want them to slide the feet and stay in front, all right? Slide the feet and stay in front, all right? Sit back on your butt a little bit. Got a little bit too much weight forward, all right? Don't chase it, all right? As soon as you see them waist bending or backing up, they intersect it and you're not getting out of the drill what you ought to be able to get out of the drill. All right, again. This is right here, I <clears throat> picked this up a couple years ago. I think it might be a very important change. Uh, we use these hand pads here. Used to see them years ago in a gym, all right, uh, with boxers. And I work on our sets, and I think it's a great idea, all right, because it forces eye contact. You know, we talk about punch, and we talk about where the punch is going to be delivered, but you know, a lot of times these guys just set and throw the punch and wherever it goes, it goes. Here you're training eye contact, all right, where you want to go. And uh, we started doing this. Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, again, all right, these hand pads are available at Gilman's, all right, but uh, it really has, I think, helped us a great deal. A couple different ways you can do it, all right, basically, all right. Uh, I just keep putting them in different positions. Is it a four eye? Is it head up? All right, is it a five? Is it a wide five? All right, set and punch. Get your hands on. All right, set and punch. Get your hands on. Now you can do it, all right, 
There's a good set right there. There's one talking about that five-step drop, that cutoff. See him cut him off? Get the hands inside. Got a little bit too much weight on the outside foot. I like to have him carry the weight the inside foot a little bit more. But see that. All right. Now here's a guard. I like this particularly for the guards and centers. All right. Inside technique. All right. Set. He really, for best, we got to get him down on one knee. It's a little bit too high. It's forcing him to strike up. I don't like that. All right. But there it is. Now move. Go to head up. All right. Now he's got to set head up. All right. It's good. All right. Boom. There is a five, te a three technique. Set outside. All right. Again, if he got down on one knee, this would be a little better location target wise. All right. But you get the idea of what we're trying to get done here. All right. Can do a rapid fire. All right. Basically, I have uh, 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 10 offensive linemen. All right. Uh, I carry about 10 of these pads because as soon as you start using them, special teams coach wants them. Everybody starts wanting them. All right. And uh, they disappear. There's another one, another, you might recognize Tunch Yokin. Uh, he works out some offensive linemen uh, for the prior to draft. I saw him do this uh, with these pads, and I like it. Just hand quickness, Joey. Puts them up there, all right, and uh, you cross, all right, arm action, all right, and it's, and it's just power, all right, and speed, all right, because you're concentrating on hitting that bat. Now, you know, now here's the location, Joey, just an extension of that, all right. Just keep moving side to side, shoulder, all right, head up, all right, set and punch. Punch was one of the great hand players in the National Football League, undersized tackle. Now, and here I take it to the field, We're talking about relative position now. You want to work a lot of people at one time, all right, put that, all right, handheld bag across their chest, all right, now you put them head up, uh, inside set, all right, you put them outside shoulder, outside set. Now I throw the bags away. All right, and uh, we'll do it live. All right, you see, what we're trying to do is isolate here now. All right, and right now we just want to work on a punch. All right, uh, whether it's versus a rip, whether it's versus an arm over, all right, or a sudden move. All right, but uh, put it in a relatively confined area. All right, two yards split with the bag. Put these guys where you want them, outside shoulder, head up. And what are you working on? You're working on the rip. All right, and it's just the first movement drill. All right, it's all it is. First movement drill. All right, get them to the intersecting point. So one of the things that I think, again, uh, in the interest of large groups, this is the training camp setup. What I do is I put these two bags here, which is about as wide as a rusher is going to get. Have the inside guy here. So here, all right, you could have a right tackle, and that's a left tackle. And here, you're doing the right tackle's work. All right, and next time this could be the left tackle. Now he's the rusher. Uh, you can get it done quickly, but I like this a five-step drill, all right, for the five-step rhythm cutoff drill right here, all right, so you got them outside here and you're coming to that cutoff, all right, contact position, all right, it's a, uh, an excellent way to get a lot of reps done, all right, and, and it's, it is a fundamental, all right, technique. Now, this is strictly uh, tackles here, all right, very seldom are you going to get guards, all right, that have to deal with that way. Now, then we wind up going to our all right, five on four, all right, uh, pass protection. And here's all I suggest to you. All right, I want to get as many reps as I can. So uh, instead of going two at a time, uh, one at a time, I go two at a time. So just showing you organization of it. All right, the right tackle, all right, goes and the left guard goes. All right, that way I don't think I'm going to have, all right, uh, too many collisions. All right, I got the left tackle going and now I got the right guard going. All right. So I'm getting two at, two at a time, all right? I'm getting two at a time. That's basically what I'm trying to emphasize. Obviously, there's no way you can get the center, all right, uh, the work he needs and have him go with anyone else. So uh, the centers went one at a time, all right? So, you know, you all probably do some form of this, all right? Uh, now, the other thing we'll do is we'll break it up, all right, spread it out a little bit wider, all right, and we'll go half lines. Again, we're still going two at a time, you see? Uh, this is a little harder, all right, because you can't see him. Uh, here's what I say to you, though. Now, basically, when I'm in this kind of a drill, I'm trying to get reps. And, and I'm going to coach the pass protection in meetings later in the night. I'm going to coach the pass protection off the tape, all right? So as many reps as I can get is what I'm interested in. 
you know, and then obviously, all right, uh, we get into uh, uh, two on two situations, all right, where we'll work the right side, all right, uh, line stunts, we'll talk about them uh, specifically technique wise later on, just trying to show you the drill here. Then we go to left side, all right, <clears throat> or uh, we can involve the center and go uh, three on two or three on three. I like to evolve this into a three on three drill. So we go right side, left side, all right, then we wind up in the middle, all right. You guys all probably do something like that. Now, for you college guys that are here, all right, and for the high school guys, you got to get into the principal's office, talk about foreign exchange, all right, uh, classes, and I think we got to uh, talk to our recruiting coordinators, all right, because if you're looking for offensive linemen, all right, basically everything that we're talking about in terms of bend and demeanor, and obviously uh, toughness. The only thing I don't know is that. Uh, whether these guys uh, will pass the intelligence test, all right? But, and if you're looking for a combatant with the hands, all right, this, all right, is where we ought to be going, looking for offensive linemen right here. I don't know whether we get by with those uniforms here, all right, uh, however. Question I'm often asked is, uh, how are you handling the uh, Bear slash 46 defense? Uh, a lot of different names for it, a lot of different ways to get in it. As you can look at this drawing that I have right here, the reason I have these squares, all right, because uh, depending upon who employs it, uh, they could be linebackers and or defensive backs, all right? So our identification of this front basically is, hey, when they cover these three, all right, internal people right here, we know a couple things about this front just right off the get-go. Number one, all right, single safety means man coverage. These two guys are known rushers. It's always uh, prudent to expect a five-man rush, all right, and line stunts involving these three people right here. So even if you were in a three-wide receiver defense, as I have drawn up right here, all right, they probably all right, anticipate a number of superiority in terms of how they line up. You know, it's man coverage because it's single, all right, middle safety. These are the known rushers, and you're going to expect a, a line stunts. All right, if you were in a situation where, all right, you were one back offense, all right, still, all right, basically, uh, they look at it and say, all right, you got, all right, probably six blockers. You might have seven blockers, all right, but no matter how you do it, all right, it's man coverage, known rusher, known rusher, expect line stunts. Anytime you have a single middle, all right, uh, person, it's usually a linebacker, could be a DB, then you got to anticipate a gap entry, all right? Now, the thing I say to you, all right, that's key is, is it a single safety? If it's a single middle field safety, you know, all right, in all probability their man coverage, all right, this guy's going to come. Now, if, all right, the safety, all right, leaves the middle of the field, all right, and it gets in this location, then you've got to deal with these two guys coming, all right? And I say the other thing to you is if it is, all right, a too deep look, all right, if it's a too deep look, then they're probably trying to bluff you into some type of, all right, protection, uh, audible, all right, and then they're not going to rush, they're going to play zone underneath and, and uh, hope to be able to cut you off. I think, first of all, all right, let's go back to all right, uh, whether you're nickel or regular, if that was just a tight end here, all right, then that would just bring another man to the party here, eliminate these two guys for a moment. All right, I think, uh, obviously, all right, you are going to have some run audibles. That's not necessarily the discussion all right, right now. All right, the discussion is past protection. Quite frankly, I believe that's the best thing to do when you see this thing, all right? Swell up, all right? Call your best protection scheme that you have and let it rip. They're in man coverage, all right? What we would do, all right, if it were a regular defense, all right, what we would do in this situation, because uh, if this back blocks, all right, and you slide your line, for instance, all right, then he ricochets. 
All right, so if you're in a regular drop back pass protection, all right, basically, you better be in a three step mentality or a slide mentality, all right, so that you can handle, all right, the internal pressure. All right, I'm going to show you, all right, a philosophy, all right, in terms of protecting against that front. All right, number one, all right, if We see this front, one of the first things we want to know, all right, from the standpoint of deployment, all right, when they play a guy over the tight end and a guy outside of the tight end, is one of these guys an end? Are they both linebackers, all right, or is all right, it a uh, safety linebacker combination? Obviously, if it's uh, one of those four combinations, all right, then uh, we feel pretty good about the fact that a back, all right, should be able to match up against those, all right, and we'll slide the line, all right, so that A, anything they want to do line stunt-wise with these three guys, all right, basically you got four on three, you ought to be in good shape. If they have a middle, all right, entry in either one of these two A-gaps, Again, you ought to be in good shape. It's based on the fact that all right, the back could match up all right, with a linebacker or a DB. Uh, obviously, if it's a defensive end, all right, you don't like that matchup. All right? So if it's a defensive end and all right, you are in a two-back situation or you're in a regular all right, personnel grouping, all right, and that's a defensive end, all right, we feel like you have to, all right, now go solid, all right, not as good a protection, all right, if you're going to be in your short set, all right, the ball ought to come out fairly quickly, all right, and you are going to affect, all right, the under coverage because these guys are man, all right, again, the big key here for the tackle is this single safety, then you know only one of these two guys are coming. If this safety comes over, then he's got to MDM. He's got to set that. So we would five, all right, we would block our five against their five. Don't like that unless it was three-step drop. And then we don't care who this guy is, all right, whether we're sliding left or we're sliding right, all right, we would, all right, uh, gap it. Now, if it's in a nickel, all right, situation, all right, third down situation now. That's key. If it's in a third down situation, all right, and, and they run this, all right, we have a very fundamental rule, all right, and that is, is the back going to, all right, a big man, all right, and if the back is going to a big man, all right, then basically, all right, we're going to block five, all right, bigs, all right, and or change the protection. If the back, all right, is going to a linebacker, all right, then we're going to slide, all right, and we're going to let the back, all right, handle the linebacker. Everything that we do, we're going to try to get the back matched up on a linebacker so the line can slide. Again, advantage offense versus those line stunts, advantage offense. All right, versus any type of A or B gap run through. All right, when the back is matched up against the defensive end and you have to block five on five, it's not a good deal. All right, because all right, your base all right, is matched up man to man and you're subject to line stunts. A gap pressure's got to be handled all right, by gap technique by the back and the guard. All right, uh, and that is not always good, all right, from a penetration standpoint. So I think when you find yourself facing that defense, all right, I think you look at it and you say right away, all right, hey, this is what we do. Have a couple key run audibles, but if we want to pass the ball, is it a single, all right, uh, middle safety, or is it too deep look? All right, we know if it's a too deep look, it's not a pressure situation. If it's a single safety look, it's a pressure situation. We prefer to slide the protection whenever we can slide the protection and the back has the matchup, all right, of uh, 
linebacker or DB. All right, here's a pretty standard look of uh, what we call 46 defense against the two back look right here. All right, uh, here is uh, a short yardage situation. All right, and when we saw this look right here, all right, uh, we went to a play pass all right, simply because of the fact we knew it was man coverage. All right, we came out with a little naked off of this action to take advantage all right, uh, of the play action and the aggressive nature of it. But the reason I have this on here is you can see at the bottom, all right, you can see at the bottom of the screen, all right, right here, single safety. So you know that these two outside guys are known rushers. He's in coverage, he's in coverage, he's in coverage. All right, so that's a defensive end right there. All right, so if we had a three-step drop, <clears throat> We wouldn't care if in this particular case, if we had a three-step drop, we'd be sliding from this direction. He'd have a free release. So he comes down, he comes down, he comes down. We could have these four guys on these three guys, all right, relative to all right, any line stunt pickup. These guys want to run through either the two A gaps, we're in great shape. So your slide protection is basically the way you want to go. All right, if you were in a drop back pass game and you didn't slide, then you would have basically five one-on-ones and you want to avoid that, all right, because these guys are isolated, all right, as far as the uh, uh, line stunts are concerned, all right. So uh, there's a good example of it. Now, here's a, exactly what I'm talking about right here. All right, and we have a, all right, single field, uh, middle field safety right here. So we know it's a pressure situation. All right, he's cheated over, all right, and so they're able to bring this guy. But the point is, we want to slide. We like this matchup. All right, this is a scheme where we keep the tight end in. He turns out and blocks the known rusher. All right, the linebacker takes care of that guy and does a really good job of stoning him. But what we have here, all right, advantage offense. All right, we got four on three. All right, so if they want to run a line stunt, we got it. If they want to run this guy through the A gap, we got it. All right, and we're in a position to be able to help, all right, wherever we need the help. All right, as far as pickup is concerned. Again, uh, we had a way, all right, in terms of uh, communicating to the team whenever they saw, all right, nickel jam, we had a run on and we saw that, uh, I call it nickel jam, it's just a regular defense here, obviously two backs, single field safety, known rusher, known rusher, going to be man coverage. Right, and we had a way to audible, all right, to the, uh, play action, all right, or a way to audible to move the pocket. So we like to move the pocket or run naked against it, all right, as an alternative. Again, all right, five on four, all right, all right, in this scheme right here, we keep the tight end in, all right, back has that linebacker, all right, we have five, all right, offensive linemen to block these three, all right, if they want to drop the end or five on four, but we have an advantage any way it wants to go. You wind up really discouraging them, all right, uh, if this is a, is a factor. I think, all right, you want to avoid, all right, what's happening right here. You have, all right, a jam front, all right, and you wind up, all right, blocking, all right, one on one, all right. This happened to be what we call, uh, all right, our base man protection, you know, now this back right here has him. He needs to be watching him. But obviously you saw the slide. Would you rather be sliding, all right, or would you rather, all right, be one-on-one -on -one up here exposed to the line stunts and having the back have to sort his way through that right there? I think the picture is, uh, is obvious, all right? Again, uh, you're in a form of empty protection, all right, uh, so you're forced to go, all right, five on five, all right, unless because of the detached formation, all right, they're going to drop, all right, somebody. So they did in this particular case, all right, so we're still able to slide. Again, look at the advantage that it gives you versus a line stunt. Uh, so my, uh, again, we're back in a two-gap world right here, all right. made a solid call, all right, rather than going slide, all right, uh, because of the play action nature of, of things, all right, so this back had him, all right, this back had him to him, 
Uh, if there was a threat, all right, he would have to wrap back to get it. Again, the point I'm making to you is, as much as you can avoid isolating these guys one-on-one, -on -one, all right, it's not a good deal, all right? So you want to be able to do that. Your scheme, all right, is slide, all right? Every way you can figure it out. Here we got, all right, a three-step drop. He has a free release, all right, and we're sliding. Ball comes out quick, all right? We have a slide on, all right? Release, all right, of the tight end. Now, uh, what happens right here is that uh, this tackle gets so focused on that defensive end, he forgets about that guy. And uh, when you got a set, all right, to a two look like that, then this guy's got a set inside out, all right? Get lucky there because quarterback gets rid of the ball. All right, that pickup, all right, on the tackle, all right, has to be an MDM pickup. Again, all right, <clears throat> like the matchup, all right, because we're sliding, all right, this tackle, or right, this guard right here loses this man to the inside, all right, the center should be compensating right here, all right? Again, I don't believe, all right, we should ever have any problems in A gaps with this protection right here. It's a bad job of that guard just getting a, a beat inside too quick, all right, and, and the center not seeing it, but uh, basically, all right, they push the power well enough to stack it up. Again, does the back, all right, go to a DB or a linebacker? Yes, he does. If he does that, all right, then we're going to slot. All right, if there's a slot out here, he'd have the guy off the slot. But again, all right, we don't expect that we should have any problem any time that we can get four on three and eventually be able to get some help outside. All right, again, all right, is this guy going to a backer or a DB? Yes, he is. By rule, all right, we should be sliding to the right. But the offensive uh, line, the tackle particularly, is alert. He sees, all right, the safety coming down, all right, which was the key that we were going to get an overload blitz. So this is one of the rare occasions because of, all right, one, two, three, four. Uh, it's a four-week call for us. When we get a four-week call, that means we're going to send the line and the back to the same side. All right, so now we're sliding. Again, great illustration of advantage offense versus line stun pickup, all right? And, and we have enough hats, all right, for the hat, all right? Need a little, little better job of the tackle set here, but the tackle has him, the slide has him, and the back takes him. Uh, it, it's a wonderful way from a protection plan, all right, to attack, all right, uh, the 46 defense. Here's Tennessee. Jeff Fisher is a student of Buddy Ryan. They probably do as good a job as anybody. Carolina, probably the second best. All right, but again, all right, the back in our one back offense here, our back is going to a linebacker. So we'll slide away. We'll let him have him. All right, we'll slide. Again, look at the advantage versus the line stunt. All right, the big thing here, the quarterback would have to realize is that he has him man for man when we're sliding away. If when he sees him block, he comes, all right, then basically, all right, uh, you got to beat what we call the ricochet blitzer, all right, uh, with, all right, uh, the throw. Now, here's an example again, all right, uh, we wind up changing, all right, the protection slightly here, all right, but it's a slide, all right, we're sliding to the right, all right, they're trying to blow up, all right, the two A gaps, all right, uh, Occasionally, you get an overload situation, all right, and this guy uh, dropped. Most people try to engage one of these two people. All right, we would get into, in some situations, when there's an overload, what we call max technique. We know eventually when they blow the two A gaps, this guy's going to just try to use you up. So we'd have a, a hand here inside him by the center. He has him, all right, inside him by the guard on him, and he has him. All right, these three would be blocked by these two, knowing that, all right, uh, somebody's going to drop out, all right? This is a hell of a catch right here, all right? Tips the ball, comes back underneath, touchdown. Uh, Joe Jarevicius from Penn State. 
as good an example as I can give you of our protection plan. Let me summarize. All right, uh, we were in a two-back situation and would have a run-on in anticipation I, we would have a plan, either we had a run on that could stay on versus that front, or if not, uh, we would have a buzzword to convert all right, a naked or bootleg off of that run to try to take advantage of uh, the aggressiveness of, of the front. Number two, all right, if we were going to stay in play from a protection standpoint, all right, we wanted to be able to slide protect. All right? The key to slide protecting, obviously, if you're going to slide from the tight end side, then it didn't make any difference who all right, uh, the people were. All right, the tight end would always block outside, take the known rusher. All right, we'd slide inside, and the back all right, would be responsible all right, uh, for the first thing that shows uh, away from the slide. If we were going to not have a tight end in the game, all right, then we would slide all right, to either the DB or the linebacker, whatever matchup was favorable for the back. And if it was a one-back situation and he was going to a defensive end, then and only then all right, uh, would we block it all right, five on five. Uh, Try to avoid that as much as we possibly can. I want to talk about uh, seven-man pass protection schemes. Now, obviously, uh, you can block seven men, uh, you can have a six-man package, you can have a five-man package, all right? Uh, seven-man package is a relatively basic package. Uh, I say this to you, uh, based upon, all right, my experience, I hold this out to you. I don't know uh, where you're at. If you're seeing a lot of zone blitz, all right, I don't know how much flat out pressure you're seeing. Zone blitzes can be problematic for six man protection, all right. Uh, you have six man protection, they can force a lot of hots, all right. My thinking is this there's a place for six man protections. What I want to talk to you about here uh, is a variety of seven man protections, all right. And these seven-man protections uh, give you a drop back, all right, possibility, all right, uh, with five linemen, two backs, all right. They give you a drop back possibility, all right, with five linemen, the tight end in a back, and a slide protection concept. I have a move the pocket concept and a play action concept. My point to you, all of these seven-man protection concepts all right, are excellent against whatever the defense wants to throw at you from a zone, all right, blitz, or, or all-out pressure standpoint. Basically, what you're going to say when you look at these all right, is that not any one of these do you want to employ, but what I'm trying to sell to you is a cross-section right, of these used in the obvious passing situation all right, is a very nice package to have. All right, now, one of the things that people say about seven-man protection is that, hey, I don't affect the under coverage. All right, and I say to you, you can do a great job of teaching your backs, all right, and in fact, I think it's a, almost imperative these days that you teach the line, all right, uh, to read safeties so that you can anticipate the backs have to learn to read their way out. Or in some cases, and I'll show you some examples, I right, chip all right, their way out. Now, the very basic, and I don't, I don't want to bore anybody because I know you all know it, all right, the very basic seven-man protection all right, is obviously the tight end and the two wide receivers have free releases. The backs all right, are responsible for the outside linebackers all right, to their side, respectfully. All right, so if you were dealing with all right, a simple, all right, even all right, front, they have the outside backers. These five guys have the inside, the middle linebacker. Variations, all right, two. And, I, and two points I want to make all right, very quickly to you. Number one, uh, if you're seeing a lot of zone blitz, 
then basically the zone blitzes are most often directed to the bubble. All right? So that you're in an under defense, most of your zone blitzes are going to come to that side right there. If you're in an over defense, all right, most of your blitzes are going to come to that side. So I say to you, have a bubble plan, anticipate the bubble blitz, all right, and in addition to anticipating the bubble blitz, all right, basically, all right, know where the safeties are located, all right, because if they're going to bubble blitz, all right, they got to bring, all right, a safety down, all right, to unlock the bubble. All right, and that gives you, all right, great anticipation. Now, we make some adjustments, all right, in our seven-man protection. Let's call this base man protection, all right, in that uh, obviously if the safety comes down, we know we're going to get the mic and the buck. We're in good shape here because of the fact that, all right, the uncovered guard, all right, will work with the tackle and the tight end in that. Over here, all right, we do not like, all right, to put our halfback on a will linebacker, all right, uh, we will fan the bubble, all right, and in this particular case, the guard and, all right, the tackle will have the end and the will, and the back will have the mic linebacker. So whether they want to bring, all right, the free safety and the mic, or they want to bring the mic and the will, or the free safety and the will, all right, we got three, all right, for three, and we call that fan, so that these two guys always take care of the known rushers and scan, which means you have the mic or the free safety if he comes. Where this becomes a little bit of a problem is when the mic linebacker goes, all right, to the tight end side. You don't like the back to cross over the quarterback's drop to pick him up. So now the indicator is, all right, the safeties. If they're bringing a weak safety down, we'll stay fan and scan. If they're bringing a strong safety down, all right, then we'll go to a solid call where the left guard and the center will take the mic, and now, all right, the back will have the wheel linebacker. The big adjustment, obviously, 34 defense, because in, when you play a 34 defense, the two outside linebackers are known rushers, all right, uh, we want to fan the open side, A, to keep him off uh, a pretty strong rusher, B, we don't want to lose him in the pass protection all the time. All right, so we want him out as a route runner. If this guy in any fan situation walks up on the ball, obviously you can't fan. It's what we call a tough call. It goes back to a solid situation. Now, again, a variation, all right, a variation of all right, the seven-man right, protection all right, is to keep the tight end in all right, let a back release, and you still have seven men, all right? And all the rules to the open side would be the same with fan and scan, all right? Uh, again, what are the disadvantages of it? I think, uh, first of all, advantage, all right? Uh, you get to put a tight end, all right, to the side of a good rusher. It helps the tackle, all right? Obviously, if they're going to rush this guy, all right, safety comes down to unlock the bubble, all right? You still have three for three. I don't like all right, not having the back in the backfield because it limits your flexibility somewhat. But the advantage of, of having a possible tackle all right, tight end double on a good rusher, I think, is, is worth the change up. All right? Lack of flexibility all right, is a negative. The positive is putting another body to an open side speed type rusher to slow them down. So, 74 and 75 protection, or uh, as we call it when the tight end stays in, all right, is an excellent protection. Now, all right, if you want to all right, stay in the seven-man protection world, all right, then uh, what I say to you is, all right, have a plan. All right, here he is, and it could be two back or it could be one back. Here's a seven-man protection plan that now isn't straight drop back. Uh, man, it's straight drop back slide. We're able to slide because we keep the tight end in. So you need a tight end in the back, all right? And you slide the line. Now, the only variables, all right, it becomes a gap protection, all right? One, two, three, four, five gaps. So everybody blocks their gap. Here's what we do. It's a little change of pace, 
All right, but as long as there's not a defensive end over the tight end because we don't like that matchup, all right, we're always going to send the tight end into that gap. All right, if the tackle doesn't have anybody in his immediate inside gap, obviously he would post and slide inside. But this is uh, a very good protection. It's solid, all right, the slide, all right, the matchup. The downside of this protection is the fact that you only have three eligibles out. Okay, we try to offset that by if this guy's not needed in here after he chips or has pickup, and if there is no pickup or no one to chip on, we'll send him out a little four by four check down. But you lose 40% of your eligibles if these two guys are in. All right, so, but it is a seven man, all right, slide protection. All right, so you, my point that I'm trying to sell here is you present the same profile. All right, you have two backs or one back, and all of a sudden, all right, he releases, all right, you got man protection. All right, next time, all right, he releases, he stays in, he stays in, you got man protection. Next time, all right, he slides, all right, you got man, all right, slide protection, all right, and you presented the same profile to the defense. I like this protection, particularly against teams that do a lot of line stunts. This is an excellent protection if you anticipate, all right, if you anticipate blitz or dog. Again, all right, keep in mind what we're talking about, all right, in a 25, 50, in, in the over-under defenses, all right, is that we're expecting, if you want to come after us, all right, we're expecting, all right, as the safety comes down, all right, we're going to be, all right, getting, all right, a lot of pressure. Now, all right, this is zone, all right, drop pressure. It's not man-for-man -man pressure. It can be disguised very well. All right, so the point is, this protection in those types of down and distance situations or that circumstance, in my opinion, is well worth the trade-off right, of losing 40% of your eligibles when these two guys stay in all right, for the protection purposes. All right, now, I just showed you all right, two examples all right, of all right, drop back all right, protection. All right, now, what I'm going to show you in the seven-man protection world all right, is what we call, all right, counter pass protection. Now, why I start with this drawing has two purposes, all right. Number one, all right, this is a gap protection, all right, where the offside guard pulls, all right, the offside guard pulls, all right, and you need, all right, to have the tight end, all right, now you can have them in a stationary position, I prefer to have a move because I think the flexibility of being in this off position from a protection standpoint is excellent. But again, it's a seven-man protection, all right, but it has a different profile, all right? These guys are all blocking gaps, all right? The guard has the first thing it shows outside of the tackle's block, all right? You get a good, all right, counter fake here, all right? And it's a solid seven-man protection, gap security, all right, and it presents a little different profile, all right, to the defense. But it's as good as, all right, any of the other previous mentioned seven-man protections, all right. And the plus is if, all right, the back isn't needed in blocking, he can check down. Again, what is the downside of this? The downside of this protection is the fact that it's a three, all right, receiver, all right, three wide receiver in most cases, but it's a three receiver package, all right? But again, zone blitz me, all right? If you want to zone blitz me, all right, you want to all out blitz me, all right? It's, it's a comprehensive protection, all right, that winds up, all right, being very secure, all right? In that third down, all right, known, all right, pass rush situation. All right, two points of emphasis that I want to make. All right, they're very big coaching points. All right, number one, all right, when you run this protection, all right, you could have a two look. This is how people try to beat the protection. All right, when you have that look, I think it's important to have some kind of call. We just simply make it a two call to the guard so that he knows he's got a hard edge. This guy will slow down, all right, and let this guy cross his face. If for some reason he doesn't cross his face and there's two outside, all right, the guard takes one and the uh, back takes the other. The other thing is that 
when you use motion down here at the bottom of the screen, whether it's return motion, cross motion, or whether it just lines up there, all right, a lot of times, all right, people will, all right, bring an added rusher when he sits down and protects. So these two, all right, right here on the back side, got to always be aware, all right, of the hugger, all right, or the ricochet type rusher. I don't know why, all right, but we think this is the biggest problem in the protection, and it shouldn't be if the guard, all right, uh, excuse me, if the center, all right, will recognize the need to get the tackle off. Anytime there's a guard bubble on the offside, all right, we're expecting these two guys to come in the end to come inside. The tackle has to stay with the end until the center gets them off. The center and the tackle are responsible for these two. The tight end will handle that guy easily. So my point here is that any time <coughs> anytime that the center saw all right, that he had a two look all right, with a Mike Backer on the back side, all right, he made a call all right, to the guard, all right, back, back. All right, and that just simply let the guard know, hey, this is probably a zone blitz. This guy's coming to you in a hurry, but I'm going back. I'm going to hit my, off, my right shoulder on the outside shoulder of the nose, and I'm going back to get all right, that end off of the tackle. The longer the tackle has to close inside with this backer, the more difficult it is for him to get off. But again, it's an eight-man gap secure play action, all right, third down, all right, package. Excuse me, if the center all right, will recognize the need to get the tackle off. Anytime there's a guard bubble on the offside, all right, we're expecting these two guys to come in the end to come inside. The tackle has to stay with the end until the center gets them off. The center and the tackle are responsible for these two. The tight end will handle that guy easily. So my point here is that anytime, <coughs> anytime that the center saw all right, that he had a two look, all right, with a Mike Backer on the back side, all right, he made a call, all right, to the guard, all right, back, back, all right, and that just simply let the guard know, hey, this is probably a zone blitz, this guy's coming to you in a hurry, but I'm going back, I'm going to hit my off, my right shoulder on the outside shoulder of the nose, and I'm going back to get, all right, that end off of the tackle. The longer the tackle has to close inside with this backer, the more difficult it is for him to get off. But again, it's an eight-man gap secure play action, all right, third down, all right, package. All right, last but not least, all right, in that type of mentality is what we call, and again, you're going to move the tight end, all right, uh, call it whatever you want to call it, all right, but we call it sweep pass. And again, all right, you just have the same profile, all right, that you have. You're just moving the tight end in a different direction, all right, but you have the same profile, all right. It's important, all right, to have the tight end in this location, whether you arrive there, all right, with motion, return motion, or you line them up there. My own personal preference, and you'll see when we look at it in tape in a minute, it's better to have him arrive there in motion. It's key, just like in the counter, all right, when we were talking about that little counter protection, all right, it's key, all right, that this guy be in that off location. And again, I think advantageous, all right, uh, for him to arrive there in motion, all right, uh, fashion. Why is the sweep pass, all right, uh, motion arrival important for this guy? Because basically the tackle, all right, and the tight end must secure the edge. All right, because the sweep pass is a moving pocket. The quarterback's going to come out on the move. Those guys have to secure the edge. Again, all right, what is the downside of this protection? I think the downside of this protection, again, is only all right, that it reduces the field to the 
all right? So you don't have a full range of spectrum in terms of, all right, pass audibles, all right, but basically, uh, pass this, uh, route distribution, I should say, but basically, you're reducing the field, all right, to one third, all right, uh, and you're probably only taking advantage of two eligibles, but it moves the pocket, it can pick anything up, uh, it is uh, a protection you want to have in your pocket to go to, all right, in a third and long situation, all right, or an obvious, all right, uh, um, pressure situation. Here's what it looks like. I want to say these to you, all right, are the most important coaching points. I'll be able to illustrate them better when we look at the tape, all right, but sweep pass, all right, it's very important, all right, that we block gaps and not defenders. As you can see, only the tackle and the tight end are aggressive, all right, in their pass protection techniques. Everybody else has a pass set, onside gap, all right, mentality, all right? And uh, if you get to your gap, all right, and nothing shows in terms of pressure, and you're an onside center or guard, it's all right for you to come back, all right, and peel off any chasers, all right? But again, and we'll look at tape of this here in a moment, all right? Again, the thing I want to illustrate, all right, to you, all right, is that, hey, I'm in a known passing situation, all right? That's, all right, the first point. The second point is I'm anticipating pressure. All right, this may be a zone blitz team. They like the blitz bubbles, maybe third down, nickel package. All right, uh, I know I have pressure coming, all right? And so I want to be gap secure, all right? Now, I could be in a six-man scheme. I could be in a five-man scheme and be forced to throw hot. I'm not interested in throwing hot. I believe in this all right, uh, package. You can teach the backs to read their way out if you're in your man protection scheme, either with two backs or one back and a tight end. All right, The counter play, as, uh, play action protection is gap secure. It may even slow a good end a rusher down, a good wide speed rusher because he sees the run fake coming at him. All right, And then obviously, we're not kidding anybody, it's third and 12. All right, you're going to probably zone blitz me so that I got to throw hot. All right, everybody will be happy. I'll read my keys. I'll throw hot. We'll make the completion. You'll make the tackle. Punt team comes on the field. I'm not interested in that. I want to pick it up. I want to throw for a conversion. I don't want the punt team. I want to stay on the field. All right, sweet pass is a nice little add in that situation. And with the wide movement gives you some flexibility. Okay, here is all right, our 25 protection. All right, uh, basically, all right, uh, we got two backs, three eligibles are out. All right, uh, we're sitting down here. All right, uh, four bigs. We got the Mike linebacker. All right, number 94. All right, back has 50 and 53 to 28. All right, straight. All right, man protection. All right, obviously, all right, he sees him dropping. Uh, we like, all right, in certain situations to emphasize the chip. All right, here you can see the fullback. All right, and the tailback getting a chip, and they're on their way out. All right, so just because you're chipping doesn't necessarily mean, all right, that you can't get out and run your pattern. If we didn't ask them to chip, basically they'd be looking at it. Uh, uh, there's a 57 defense right here. It just simply means it's a, uh, an over, all right, uh, type of a front. All right, so these two have these two. When this guy comes on the line of scrimmage outside like that, all right, we could fan it. All right, but it's a too deep look, all right? So it's not a single safety look, so we're going, all right, to the mic here. He has a defensive end again. All right, he sees a linebacker, or he sees a safety drop. He knows his linebacker's not coming. All right, he does a good job of chipping on his way up. It doesn't affect his pass route at all. Again, uh, he has 52, all right, all right, too deep safety. He knows no pressure, all right? He's got a release, all right? Should have caught the ball, all right? Now we got a regular even front. There's a middle linebacker. There's a Mike call right there. All right, we're going to read our way out. It's a formation where we had the tight end in the backfield taking the place of the fullback. Reads his way out. Wouldn't have minded at all if he would have hit this guy on his way out. We like to emphasize that, all right? But this is, all right, 24 protection, all right? Again, show it to you against a 34 defense. 
to the open side, we're going to fan it. All right, that means these two have these two. He has the back. All right, uh, we get the double here. If he drops, all right, we're going to look to go help someplace. All right. And get a look at this uh, versus pressure. All right. Again, we get outside pressure coming right here. All right, back was a little too quick to leave right here. You can see it show up, all right, in a hurry. But I think we do a good job, and then my point to you is you can be in this protection, all right, and you're not going to affect the under coverage if you're going to teach these guys to read their way out, even at times, all right, <clears throat> when you want them to chip and help. Now, just for illustration purposes, all right, we're in a nickel situation here. They're in a sub-defense, third down, all right, uh, basically, the way we determine this is that the Mike linebacker is going to be to the strength of the formation. Uh, we have a rule that says, hey, the guy over the slot, all right, is the nickel uh, Sam backer, the next guy's the Mike. Now, what we will do, again, when the center's uncovered, he'll read the safeties. And if the safety comes down weak, we can read the clear to Mike linebacker, all right, so that, all right, we will anticipate, all right, four weak or four strong based upon, all right, uh, where the safety comes down and utilize the uncovered lineman to go to that side. All right, so and we have that uh, capability, all right, in this situation. Here's a nickel, all right, under defense, all right, a pretty clear declaration that right there is a Mike linebacker, all right, a single, all right, field safety. We're in pretty good shape here from an assignment standpoint. There's a nickel over defense. Here's the Mike linebacker. These two guys would be looking to him unless the safety came down. Then we could redirect. He would go here. He would take care of the safety. All right, so uh, we have that capability right there. All right, now I just want to go through here quickly. Uh, got a couple uh, looks I want to talk to you about. Now, what do you do, all right, if you're playing, all right, a team that uses only three down linemen? Basically, uh, I want to approach this thing just as I would approach a 34 defense. By that, I mean if this is the strength of the formation, these two guys would fan and he would scan. All right, this guy would be solid on him and he'd be responsible all right, for the guy off of the slot. Uh, if they want to all right, move all right, their linebackers or defensive backs into an overload situation, I think it's a key point. Anytime all right, there's a single all right, block responsibility all right, to the back side, all right, then we change this from a man protection to a slide protection away. All right. In this particular case, we stayed straight up. Here's a nickel 32. All right. They've got that look right there. He has whoever comes off of the edge. These two have these two. He has who comes off of that edge right there. All right, sits there, all right, pretty good shape. All right, any kind of seven-man pressure uh, uh, we'll handle. All right, uh, here's a good example right here. All right, middle linebacker, there's a middle declaration. He has him, he has him. Obvious nickel situation. Now they're going to try to wrap this guy all the way around. It's a good example, all right, of forcing the bump. There's a bump, there's a bump, all right. Tackle comes off. All right. We would like all right to see all right the back fill, all right, the tackles bump or the tackle come underneath that a little bit quicker. Normally what we would do, all right, if this were a known situation and he cheated over here a little bit, all right, we'd change the protection a call from a mic call to a slide call where these three would take him and he would sit for the mic if the mic were over here. But here the mic's in the middle. You don't know which way he's going to go. The back has to take this guy on more decisively because, all right, it's the penetration, all right, uh, which happens to be a factor here. All right, now, here's all we did, all right. We said, all right, back, you got a free release. We're going to keep the tight end in, all right. And this back will assume, all right, all the open side rules, all right. Uh, these three right here, all right, have these three. Here's the mic linebacker. Uh, the disadvantage of this protection, obviously, is you could have a tight end on a defensive end. All right? But if the tackle's uncovered, what he does, he sits down with the guard, makes sure the linebacker's not blitzing, he gets back out and he doubles. So it's a plus in the sense that 
either or, all right, you can wind up with two on one, all right? If you've got a good defensive end pass rusher putting a tight end to his side, it's not a bad idea, all right? The flexibility of a back being in a backfield, all right, uh, is lost because obviously the tight end can't adjust. Here's another example, all right, where the tight end stayed in. Actually, he was checking for strong safety, but should have been out also, all right? Uh, very all right, indecisive here. All right, the guard all right, should be bumped off by the tackle. All right, the tackle's not making a switch call or bumping all right, fast enough to get the tackle off. Again, tight end stays in, back works away, but seven-man protection. All right, you know, that means that you can handle anything that they're going to do all right, be in pretty good shape. Again, it's a great way to neutralize. All right, it's a great way to neutralize all right, uh, a, a good pass rusher because you get a two-on-one on. I think that's uh, that's the advantage of it. Again, tackle, all right, and tight end have a chance, all right, because this guy drops the double. All right, should have done a better job, all right, right here, all right, but got a chance to double. There's no downside, all right, uh, to the protection, all right, if what you're looking for is getting another guy on a good defensive end type rusher. The downside of protection is, again, I think you have a little bit more flexibility, particularly against safety blitz, all right, uh, if that situation would arise. All right, so, uh, again, you have an example of uh, seven, all right, uh, man, protection. Here's a fan and scan look for you, all right, on the backside. These two have these two. He sits, finds the safety, and... All right, the double of a defensive end in that, in that situation right there. Now, here's a seven-man scheme. Now we want to change it, all right? We want you to see the same profile. All right, expect him to be releasing, but we want to slide it now. I like this protection against line stunts. like this protection in known blitz situations. All right, tight end. All right, everybody has gaps. And you, and you have gaps until two things happen. Either, all right, there's a tackle bubble and he has a defensive end over him or he has a, a linebacker DB on him, all right, and it ends outside and he'll turn out. But everybody has gap protection, all right? Uh, it should be a solid protection. Now, we've got some problems here because, A, he oversets. He doesn't take the proper footwork. See how he crosses over that outside foot? All right, fortunately, all right, uh, the uh, back is there to battle him out, all right? Uh, the set here is too vertical. He's got to have a little wider set than he does. Uh, he's got inside help if the guy tries to come inside all right, with those two people. One of the things I like about this protection is we should be able to get a tackle help. There's slide protection. All right? He stays in on the big end. This guy sits on the outside leg of the tackle, checks this guy. All right, If he doesn't come, he can chip, and now we got a check down. Uh, great protection, good protection all right, to use in a known blitz situation. All right? Downside is you're losing 40% of your eligibles because, all right, these two guys are staying in. Teach him to run a chip, all right, and check, all right, and run a check down. Be creative with your formations, all right. Uh, this is a protection where the, the quarterback can and should be able to be comfortable in a seven-step drop, all right, should be able to have some a pattern development, all right, and time to throw it. Uh, again, slide protection. Here we wind up with a three-on-two situation. All right, these guys drop. All right, we're two-on-two. Two, all right, so they're rushing four people. All right, and basically, all right, we got double teams. At the minimum, we got double teams in every one of these guys. A the quarterback should have ample opportunity, and uh, whatever you're doing downfield, all right, should have ample opportunity to develop. Again, most of these we're calling in down-and-distance situations. All right, where we expected pressure, and, I, and they didn't pressure us. Well, if they don't pressure us, man, we ought to have a lot of opportunity to throw the football. All right, let's take a look at some of these versus pressure so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, now here's a look right here, all right? They're coming at us off the edge, all right? First of all, all right, we got a match up here, linebacker, linebacker. He takes the known rusher. All right, he has that guy right there. All right. Sit down inside. All right. Very good versus the line stunt. All right. 
just like a slide protection versus that 46 defense. He's got the safety coming off the edge. All right, nice pickup. All right. Plenty of time. All right. Again, all right, pressure. All right, pressure. All right, you want to bring four guys off the weak side? All right, you got a hat for a hat. He got the widest. All right. These two guys got the next two right here. All right. Our problem here is, all right, don't do a very good job back here on this side. Uh, I'm going to bring a point up here because I think it's important. It becomes what we call four weak. When you have a fourth man rushing from this side, all right, the center has to employ that guy right there. Normally what will happen on a four week, this guy's going to balance the rush up. He's going to be a contained rush. Tackle can't overset. That's what happened right here. This guy dropped. All right, the tackle overset. Let this guy get upfield too soon. All right, but you can see the four week look. We borrowed, in essence, the guard. He takes that guy, all right? Center and the right guard handle the TT, all right? That leaves the tackle and the tight end, all right, uh, for the remaining two rushers. There's an overset, all right? And really, when that guy drops, all right, this guy should have had a little bit better depth and get back underneath uh, Actually, a, a key play in the game, all right? Uh, that if the quarterback would have been able to have a little bit more comfort in the pocket, uh, we'd have had a completion. Again, weak side pressure. We had a four-week call again. Notice how this guard's looking over here to that side right there. All right? Now, all right, and they didn't bring the fourth rusher, but we're prepared for the fourth rusher should he come. All right? Bad job of getting overextended all right, by the left guard and not setting wide enough by the tackle. Uh, but the idea here is to give you a look at the protection, all right? Again, all right, slide, all right? We got the back is responsible for him. We got these two here to here, these three for these three right here. <laughs> Again, I say to you, the downside, all right, you lose, all right, these two eligible receivers, all right, but you bought time. I think any time that you buy time, all right, uh, then you ought to be able to get done what you need to get done. Again, four, all right, four-week call, all right, so that borrowed that guard over here to this side right here. He's coming. We got it here. We got it here. We got it here. Very good pickup, all right. Again. One of the problems, all right, is lack of discipline. Don't block a man, block a gap. All right, once again, one, two, three, four. We got a four-week call. But the center decides, hey, I'm going to help the a left guard. And just that moment of hesitation, all right, makes him slow, all right, to pick up on 55. All right, this thing ought to be just slapped right in the teeth right here on the line of scrimmage. But again, it's a seven-man protection, all right? and enables you, all right, to get done whatever you need to get done downfield. Now, here is a nickel, all right, uh, 46 type look. Here's an end dot here, tight end turns out, back has 54, all right, we wind up advantageously, all right, with a four on three combination because that guy drops. And should have plenty of time to throw, all right, and complete downfield passes, all right. Uh, Here's as good a protection as you should be able to have against this defense, all right? And here's a known pressure situation. Again, not executed very well, all right? The left tackle's got to set two vertical. He's got to set wider, be more physical, all right? The left guard, all right, loses his man too soon. But my purpose here in showing you is, all right, the pickup, all right? You got the tight end turns out on the known rusher. All right, the fullback has him. The slide element is excellent versus line stunt. All right, now, hey, we had a physical breakdown here, but the idea is to scheme, to scheme, to scheme. And now here, all right, is another element. All right, again, all right, this is counter pass protection. All right, and basically you can see, all right, the gap concept of it, I'm showing you sideline, as well as end zone, so you can get a feel for it. All right, all right. Now, 
look at it from the end zone. You see the problem here is I got a bubble look. I, I teach the tackle not to chase air, try to hog this guy. You can see him slowing down trying to hog him, but he don't want to come. All right, the guard's already past that point right there. All right, and he has the edge rusher. All right, the tailback has to give me a little bit more deliberate this fake. He's always inside of the guard, all right, so that he should be in better position to see that, all right, and pick it up, all right. Uh, problem, wanted to show it to you right from the get-go, all right. Here we are, all right, three-man rush. All right, remember, all right, this is a gap protection. These two guys will block this gap and that gap, all right, trying to come after us on the backside, all right. Again, protection, it's gap friendly, all right. This guy's too wide to hog. Key point, don't chase air, set down, wait till you see something. Here's the back call. Notice how the center gets on the backside shoulder and knows he's looking at that guy. He knows if that guy comes, he's going to have to get off fast to help the tackle out. But we got a two for two situation here. All right. Guard traps the defensive end, takes him upfield, quarterback steps up. All right. Got a completion. Need a little finish, a better finish on the backside. Can't get any more pressure than this. All right. Can't get any more pressure than this. Look at it from the end zone. Again, gaps. He got that gap, he got that gap, he got that gap, he got that gap, he pulls and blocks the first thing outside the tackle. Pressure, all right? Pressure, all right? Now, this is, all right, a dastardly situation. One, two, three, four guys weak, all right? Again, much like that 58 protection, this guy makes a four-week call, all right? Now, when he makes a four-week call, he's borrowing the guard, all right, and telling him, hey, man, we're overload here. You got to get back to the overload side. Now the guard's a little bit too anxious to hit somebody when 47 bluffs. All right, he ain't got it. All right, but again, we got four hats. One, two, three, four. All right, for their four guys. All right, and again, gap protection. All right, he's got that gap. He's got the first thing outside to tackle. All right, quarterback got a little nervous and flushed there. All right, again, first and ten to go. All right, got a 34 type defense. Look at it from the end zone, all right? Got a 34 type defense. He's going to keyword hog, which means he steps inside, hopes this guy crosses his face. If he doesn't, he's trying to pull him inside, all right? But he gave the guard a two call, all right? So the guard's an anticipating, all right, getting pressure off of the edge, all right? Uh, this actually, to be honest with you, is a mistake. Uh, this motion was supposed to be cross motion, not counter motion. This guy should be setting out here for this defensive end. This guy is coming outside. These two guys belong to the guard, the pulling guard in the back. All right, uh, we got real lucky here, all right, avoiding the sack on an ME. All right, again, let him come. All right, that's about as much pressure as you're going to see. And what I'm trying to sell you on is the fact that seven man protection and known. All right, down and distant passing situations where, all right, you're going to get zone blitz. It's third and eight, it's third and nine, it's third and ten. These people are going to zone blitz you, expect you to have some protection, all right, where you're throwing hot, all right, and, you know, they're going to come up and make the tackle on a hot receiver. You're going to be all happy because you coordinated all that, but here comes the punt team. All right, I'm saying to you in these situations, this package, all right, if you implement this package and coordinate it, I, I not use any one of them, but use all of them, man, it doesn't get any better than this. This is as satisfying as it gets for an offensive line coach. Here they come, and they're bringing three guys up the middle, but we know we got gaps, all right? So we're blocking our gaps, all right? And so they're trying to overload it. We got gap, gap, gap. Guard pulls and has the outside guy, all right? Quarterback steps up, throws the check down, all right, pick up the first down. All right, third and seven. All right, again, this is so important to the protection that this guy comes in motion and he has a one-by-one -one relationship here. It's just so much easier for him to see things, all right, and protect. All right, again, I like the element of the protection, all right, because, you know, you don't have a lot of one-on-ones. You have a lot of double team blocks, all right? You have a lot of assistance, all right? And, you know, hey, admittedly, 
Some down in distances, these guys won't respect the run fake at all. All right, it, it, it's on you as a coach. All right, in some situations that's moderate, third and five or less, you got to put this play. You got to put this run and play in. It looks exactly like the pass. You don't have to do it all the time. You have to do it once in a while. But I like this. You see, when you got gap blocking and somebody's free, what 77. I like that. That's discouraging and disheartening to the defense. All right. Again, all right. It's an unusual situation here. All right. But this is as tough as it gets. Here's the MEB. All right. Uh, Mike and Backer off the slot. All right. Now watch the tackle. All right. Hog. So he knows he's got the end. Doesn't do a good job, but structurally you got it picked up. He's got the end. He's got the rusher off the edge, and he got the first thing it shows inside. All right, take a look at it from the end zone. It's an onside guard bubble. All right, he's going to hog it. All right, and he does, and the end comes across his face. He just does a poor job of finishing the block. All right, the guard has the edge rusher. All right, the back is aborting his fake, which he shouldn't do. All right, there'll be a time when he when we'll coach him to do that if they're all right, it's two guys outside the tackle, all right, and he'll board his rush, all right, but structurally, he's got him. He's got him. He's on the inside hip of the guard, and he's got him. The fact that he gets outside too wide, all right, almost inhibits the block, all right? But, <clears throat> again, people blitz bubbles, all right? You want to be in the dreaded, all right, 46 defense? Again, all right, you got gaps. You got gaps, okay? All right, there it is. All right, come down, you got the nose. All right, doesn't do a very good job on his first step, as you can see here. But structurally, here, 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 here. All right, back outside. Notice how the tackle, when he went down inside to help the center, all right, he's got his eyes on 98. He knows that this guy has 53, 98 sees the tight end blocking on him. All right, he comes, he comes out, all right. Should have two for two. Tight end blink there. All right, not supposed to blink. Again, 49 defense. All right, just means three bubbles. I doubt it's not a balls out aggressive double team, but it's firm enough. All right, he's got the three. He's eyeballing the Mike. Mike doesn't come. He helps on the backside. Tackle and tight end have these two. So yeah, I wind up in pretty good shape here. I got four on three on the backside. All right, I got three on two on the front side. All right, one more. You get the picture of what I'm talking about right here. All right, kind of protection. Again, put him over here, sit down. All right, it's going to double. All right, you're in good shape. You got four potential rushers on the back side. All right, it's how people try to beat the protection, and I think the protection is so solid on the back side. I think the place where you could have a little bit of problem and you got to coach up. All right, your problems on the front side are really two guys outside all right, of the tackle, and this guy has to abort the fake to get one. The other thing, sometimes it's called such an obvious down of distance uh, that these guys aren't going to respect the rush. Tell the back, all right, if he feels that, all right, it's all right, all right, right, like right here. I would expect him to go attack 90, uh, help the guard out. It's a tough deal. You've got to realize on the guard's pull, he can't get depth so he clears the center back quarterback exchange point. All right, so that's as hard as it gets for the guard, all right, and uh, he doesn't have much choice but to cut, all right, and I, I would expect to get more help out of the back, all right, in that type of a known situation. Uh, again, it's eight-man protection. Here's an overload situation. I want to emphasize this to you. One, two, three, four. It's got to be a four-week call, which alerts this guard all right, that he's got the fourth man responsibility to that side. All right. Uh, this team did a good job of trying to break the protection down, and, and obviously you can see it holds up. All right. Center, all right, and a guard, and, and center and a tackle, all right, they got these two. All right. And he realizes, all right, this guy's a ricochet blitzer, number 97, with a tight end blocks. All right, wad it all up. All right, wad it up. Uh, I'm high on this protection, all right, uh, as you can tell, all right, and uh, 
You know, I, I, I think it's a great ad. And, and, and if you're not thinking about making it a nickel ad or an obvious passing situation ad, I, uh, you know, then I think you're missing a, a primary opportunity. All right, again, all right, watch this look right here. All right, see the center? All right, never took his eyes off of that guy right there. All right, and, and if this guy wants to ricochet blitz, you got to pick up now. All right, you just can't relax here. All right, and again, this is gap protection. So when this guy went across his face, he shouldn't have chased him. All right, he can be a physical presence, but his eyes need to go where? His eyes need to stay to the slide or to the gap side, all right? And then he would have been in a position, all right, to do a better job of picking that up. To summarize, at this particular point in time, what we have done, we've talked about uh, base man protection, all right, seven man man protection, five down linemen, two, uh, five offensive linemen, two backs. All right, we've talked about base seven man protection, man protection, where the tight end, all right, and the five offensive linemen replace uh, one back at a free release, so you can be a three wide out offense. We talked about a seven man slide protection. All right, we talked about a seven man play action protection. And uh, now uh, to complete, all right, the presentation on seven man protection, we're going to talk about moving the pocket. I want to go back and show you, all right, we've got a third and ten situation. I'd expect most people to zone blitz you here. I right, try to get you to throw the side adjust and you have a completion. Here we're going to move the pocket. Again, the tight end's movement, I think, is, is crucial. Whether he's same side counter motions or you cross field motion, uh, I'll show you a snap of him doing it on a line. Uh, two points uh, that uh, I will make to you. If you notice the counter protection reel, it was always to the right. Can you run it to the left? Yes, you can run it to the left. Uh, most of the quarterbacks I've been with have been right-handed quarterbacks. Uh, they're more comfortable with this to the right. Making it a one-way protection makes a lot of sense to me, all right, because you have great repetition, and you can get a lot of reps versus a lot of different looks. Uh, I think on the tape you could see, all right, that uh, the players were pretty comfortable uh, with some bastard looks that you saw. Uh, we're talking about moving the pocket now, call it whatever you want. We call it sweep protection. For those of you, this is not the old dash protection. This is sweep protection. And again, can it be run to the left? Yes, I think there'll be an illustration here where he's run to the left. But the majority of the time, we're going to, he's a right-handed quarterback. We're going to run it to the right. Again, the downside of this is as, as he rolls here, the field is reduced, so basically, for the most part, all right, you're restricting your passing game, all right, uh, you know, to the third of the field, all right? Uh, but you're moving the pocket, and uh, I think you'll be impressed with this reel. All right, it's not an every down, third and down situation, but it is uh, a good change-up. Now, <clears throat> points of emphasis. These two people, his motion landmark, he should be one yard outside of the end man on the line of scrimmage. These two guys are the only two guys that are aggressive. They're aggressive on the end man. His eyes have to go all the way to the sideline because he's responsible for pressure wherever it comes. Notice how the other men set to a gap. They don't set to a man, all right? They set to a gap. If you remember all the way back in our conversation about stance, here's a left-handed, all right, player, all right, going to go to a parallel stance because this is an awful difficult thing to do from a left stagger. All right, the back, the, again, does not have a man. He has the first guy outside the tackle's block. We're going to roll. If we're the onside guard and tackle, and we don't have a block by the time we get to this point right here, watch the center. All right, he looks back. See him look back? Uh, he'll be looking back to clean up. Uh, a lot of this is individual route running. All right. Uh, Again, all right, down a distance, third and six. Generally speaking, we like it a little bit longer than that. All right, uh, tight end, off the ball, cross field motion. Now, as he comes across, he has vision all the way to the sideline. If you're going to bring the guy off the slot, he had the guy off the slot. Motion landmark, one yard outside the end man. Notice how he and the tackle were aggressive. Everybody else pass sets to the backside. I right, would have liked him to be a little bit firmer. 
All right, but you can see productivity, even though you're, result, you're reducing the field for the quarterback, all right, you can see productivity. I like the idea, all right, the counter pass, all right, sweep pass changes the setup location for the quarterback. I think that's an advantage. All right, again, don't block a man, block a gap. Set, 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 all right, nothing comes, all right, uh, you turn back and look to help. Sweep pass. All right, sweep pass. All right, again, all right, just be re all right, to the left. Can it be done to the left with a right-handed quarterback? You bet. All right, not a lot of guys as talented as Vinny Testaverde, and uh, I wouldn't uh, recommend it, but we had done it so often, we wanted to change up. All right, uh, people uh, play tendencies. We just wanted to break our tendency. This looks tremendously like counter pass in terms of a formation tendency. Again, aggressive. This guy is fighting for contain. All right, just had numbers. All right, just didn't do a very good job of picking him up. Didn't do a good job initially of getting underneath it. All right, and when he comes back to clean up, all right, should have had a better clean up hit. Again, third and 13. All right, going to the left again. All right. I think the thing that should impress you at this particular point in time of run four or five of these, and they've all been third down pickups. Again, aggressive off the edge. You two guys got to look to the sideline, all right? You got any edge pressure, all right? And, you know, we ran this right in the teeth of a corner blitz. All right, again, all right, tight end motion, all right? Looks a lot like counter pass. We're trying to break a tendency here. Here he comes to the left again. Uh, so can it be done? Yes, it can be done primarily. All right, uh, you're not going to make uh, a living of running this, all right, uh, to the left with a right-handed quarterback. All right, uh, third and eight. <laughs> Point I want to make to you, all right, again, it's the aggressive nature of the onside guard, all right, onside tackle and tight end, all right, the sets of everybody else. And for the home run there, all right. Aggressive. I'd like the left tackle here to be even a little bit more aggressive than he is. Everybody else pass sets. Don't like the center's technique here for the first time, all right. Uh, I think if you look at the uh, offside guard and tackle, you get an excellent look at technique. All right, onside guard, excellent look at technique. You don't want to turn your shoulders. See how your shoulders turn? You want your shoulders to be all right parallel, all right, or near parallel to the line of scrimmage. All right. Again. All right, motion landmark should be one yard outside the end man line scrimmage is a little bit too short in my mind. All right, not aggressive enough on the edge. Doesn't give himself enough width on the edge. All right. Again, motion landmark, all right, See, it's key. All right, can't emphasize it enough, all right? Better, but I still think it could be wider. Aggressive technique by the onside guard and tackle. Set, set. Now, we've talked about uh, the sweep pass, all right, and the counter pass, and you saw some Y motion, all right? You saw some two back sets, all right? Uh, I just want to show you and again, you don't major in this, but I just want to show you a little companion package. Now, every time this guy's gone in motion over here, we run either a counter pass or a sweep pass. All right, so uh, what we have going on here is just, all right, uh, a little bit of the old shovel. And again, it's counter pass protection, all right, where everybody's blocking their inside gap, block your inside gap, block your inside gap. This guy, again, motion landmark shall be a little wider because we want him to influence him. All right, the guard pulls tightly, 
All right, and again, he got picked off by all right, penetration right here, but the guard will pull tightly and take care of this backside linebacker. But what I'm trying to show you here is that, again, it's an obvious passing situation. That's another bullet for your gun, all right, uh, where you can be using a tight end. They're used to this guy sitting down and block, counter pass, sweep pass. You know, now he gets to the outside shoulder, influences that guy, all right, and you run a little shovel pass, all right. Again, uh, take another little look. Here's a tight end motion coming to the right. You've been running sweep pass off of this. Actually, it's a blitz look. All right, it's about as tough as it could get. All right, but again, all right, guard realizes, a tackle realizes guard bubble hogs. All right, sees the safety down. You know the blitz has been actified. All right, hogs, all right, the edge. Tight end coming across smart enough to realize, all right, safety down and uh, Mike. All right, Buck Blitz, he takes the outside guy. Guard should have been better prepared to trap. All right, but again, run it right into the load. All right, about as loaded a situation as you can, but you got answers. All right, he got to have his eyes open. He got to make that play. He's going to make that play. You got a big gash. All right, so for the same reason that you wanted to run, all right, uh, the counter or the sweep pass, all right, the shovel works. All right, uh, here's another situation where, all right, and by technique, all right, and again, if you go by what you see, I'm not doing a good job of teaching these guys because they're not anticipating the pressure. They're, uh, they want to log, pull all the time. If this guy doesn't buy the influence, we got to trap him. But here you are, all right, uh, you're in your split back, seven man protection, all right. Uh, there's a Mike declaration. He's responsible for the guy off the slot. Uh, good point of contact there. This guy's coming down. If we were in our seven-man protection, here's an example I mentioned to you earlier where the center would change the Mike call and we would block the four week with these four guys. But again, we got the shovel pass, all right? And, and quite frankly, I think the shovel pass is an excellent huddle call. And I think you really need to keep it, all right, as an audible, all right, in terms of known pressure situations. There are some big play opportunities here. And again, not a play that you're going to run all the time, all right, uh, but it's a great change up. Here it is, all right, again, all right, influence instead of being a tight end movement comes out of the fullback. All right, he attacks that edge shoulder. All you got to do is get a little hesitation. All right, it's gap blocking principle. Nobody in your gap, work to the next level. Work to the next level, all right? What disappointed me here is, all right, work to the next level. All right, he's got that guy, all right? When they both find themselves on that man, keep working to the next level, 77. Guess who makes the play, all right? Next level blocker, all right? But, the influence guy after the influence should block the first thing it shows from the edge, from the sideline to him. All right, the guard has that guy. All right, again, all right, influence, all right, pressure situation. You know, I'm not looking for it to be the vanilla three-man rush or four-man rush. Looking for it to come against pressure because we are what? How many times have you heard me say the word gap secure? It's gap protection. Anytime that you have gap protection, you have the ability to split the defense. When you split the defense, there's big play opportunities. All right? And it, hey, they're jumping on your sword here. You just have to execute. He's got him. He's got him. He's got him. You can't be in a better situation. All right? These two guys, center and offside tackle, have an A and B gap. Leave the furthest guy. All right, come free. 60's got to hold on to his block. All right, that is a great complement, all right, to the seven-man protection schemes for the same reasons that we like the seven-man protection schemes. All right, we like this as a great mixer. Um, now, I'm going to show you one more thing here. I uh, appreciate your patience. Uh, we're going to go, all right, from black to white. We're going to go extremely opposite. And uh, quite frankly, I think from a protection standpoint, uh, you're either uh, fish or foul. 
And third, uh, I like the element of the seven-man protection, obviously. All right, and if I'm not in that seven-man protection, then you know what? Let's spread them all out, all right, and let's go to five-man protection where I can see what's coming. I first was introduced to all right, empty as a formation and as a protection by Ron Earhart. Um, Ron is now retired, was an excellent coach, head coach at one time at uh, North Dakota, uh, head coach in New England Patriots, long time assistants with Giants, Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Jets. Uh, and, and, and basically, what I'm going to say to you is this, all right, when you spread them out, all right, when you spread them out, one, two, three, four, five eligible receivers, all right, they're spreading out. All right, and it makes things easier for you to identify. Now, the principle of the protection can be said in one word. It's point protection. By that, I mean you just got to point out, all right, the most dangerous, all right, rusher and block from that perspective. Again, I said it once or twice before in this presentation, the straightest, all right, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So when we're talking about point protection, we're saying to the quarterback in the center, hey, first thing you do is that if there's something that's able to get in the A gaps immediately, then that's where we start. Nothing in the A gap, all right, then we basically are going to have a slide protection mentality away from the three receiver side. If there is no threat in the middle or away from the three receiver side, we'll re redirect our protection, all right, to the three receiver side. All right, now safeties are a key component. Here you see this man out here is backed up, so we know that we got a known rusher here. We got one, two, three, four guys on this side. All right, so what we will do, we will slide, all right, protect, all right, to the left, all right, and we'll take care of those four guys. The quarterback knows that, all right, we now can only handle one to the right, all right, the tackle ought to take the most dangerous of the two guys, all right, and we're going to be able to, all right, uh, sift the, off of that other guy. Now, we had a protection call here, all right, where we kept, all right, the tight end in. I've right, got a mental mistake here by 77. All right, he should be working with 50, 68 over here to this side right here. So probably not a great example to start out with. All right, here you are, three receiver side right here. Okay. All right, <clears throat> protection. There he is. All right, safety down. We know this guy's coming. I don't care if this guy's on us or not. We're not going to let that bluff us. All right, now. We have a call, all right, when this guy occupies us, all right, where we'll slide from the tackle all the way down. All right, it's a big slide, all right? But, and watch the center direct the traffic. So basically, one, two, three, four, five, handled by these five. Quarterback knows that if this guy would come, he's hot off him. The odds are if they're blitzing your heart off of that edge, this guy's going to be a zone drop guy anyhow. All right, so you don't have to deal with that. Again. Trying to hold the center in doesn't work, all right, because you're going to slide protected, and you may involve either the right guard sliding left or the right tackle sliding left, all right? And you got to have, all right, a call that involves the tackle, all right, to be able to handle this. The key is that this guy knows where the hot is. Right now, he knows we five are sliding for these five. If this guy comes right now, he's hot off of him, all right? Again, all right, here's your three receiver side, two receiver side. Safeties are hugely important. With that safety coming down, you know this is a free rusher right over here. It's very similar to the situation that we had uh, earlier, all right. Uh, here we got a fourth and one. All right, we're running a little QB sneak for the pickup. All right, but I wanted to illustrate this right here, empty protection. You four would have these four. Tackle would have that guy right there. We'd be hot off of that guy. Key to this identification for the quarterback in the center is that the two safeties came down to cover the slot. So we knew that this guy and this guy were coming off of the slot. All right, again, that's for 
for protection purposes, all right, not really looking at this, all right, for quarterback snake. All right, first and 10. Again, here's the three receiver side. <clears throat> all right, pretty good disguise. Safety's down over here, all right. Got to assume we're bluffing on this side, but our rule is if the guards are uncovered, all right, and we have no known blitz situation, I will dual read both guards or one guard if he's uncovered. He'll read inside to out. All right, uh, obviously, uh, we called this Gilligan just simply letting the center know he was on an island. 77 was going to read here to here. All right, this guard was going to read here to here. Uh, as they sat and would see their guys drop, all right, uh, then they should get back and help the center immediately. All right. It's hard to uh, pressure this protection. All right, three receiver side, single safety. You're not going to have anything come over here. On, you're going to have pressure if it's going to come. It's going to come from that side. All right, basically. All right, we went to a all right slide type protection here. All right, uh, these four guys took care of these four guys right here. Again, you spread the field, all right, and I think the wider you spread the field, the easier it is to see. Again, the, the principle begins, all right, if there were a man, all right, in the tackle box, he would have to start with a mic point. There is no man in the mic box, all right, so he thinks weak. He thinks away from the three receivers first. Down safety tells him, all right, one of these two rascals is going to come. All right, so our protection, all right, needs to start on this side. All right, here we had a system where we would bring this guy back in motion, all right, and we could run a draw. All right, uh, later on we ran a counter with the guard and tight end pulling or a toss. All right, so uh, he audible all right, to a 41 draw in this situation. All right, but again, uh, I have these on here, all right, to talk to you about protection. When that safety came down here, three receivers are on this side. These three guys would be responsible for these three. These two for these two, all right? All right, again, three receiver side, all right? Protection, all right? Safety's coming down on this side, all right? Uh, expecting the pressure off of that edge, all right? Uh, had a call. Again, where we could go to six-man protection by just having all right, him stay in, all right, uh, which is what he did. Uh, one advantage of having the guy in, in a tighter location. So uh, we, in essence, uh, were in what we talked about before, but out the back, that slide protection with the tight end staying in. All right, again, three receiver side. Actually, we called this quad. We had four receivers to that side. Uh, Just a slide, all right, involving the tackle, all right, and the guard kept everybody in. Just forget about these two guys for a minute. Even if they were out, you'd be hot off of this guy right here. All right, but we maxed the protection on this. Uh, but again, principle, all right, these three have these three. These two have these two. It would be a gap call by these two. All right, we'd be hot off of that guy had we not kept those two, all right, uh, receivers in. A lot of people, all right, try to overload the protection. All right, again, here was Denver trying to overload the protection. And on you see the super overload coming, you got to have a mechanism, all right, to keep somebody in or you're going to wind up throwing hot, all right, all the time. But again, look at this protection just from the standpoint of empty protection. There's three wide receivers here. You're sliding here. All right, and this guy's going to pressure the gap. These five have these five. He'd be hot off of that guy if 20 wasn't in there, all right? But again, the principle is, all right, <coughs> middle responsibility to slide responsibility, all right? And if it was an overload slide, then you would involve the tackle. Always keep, all right, the hot receiver, all right, and the hot, all right, in the quarterback's face, all right? There's a good example right here of an overload situation, all right? Again. All right, pressing the A-gaps, 
All right, so we have to squeeze with the tackle. Now, again, motion, change this to a six-man protection, but again, I'm just talking empty. All right, these five have these five. He would be hot, obviously, if he wasn't in there protecting, he'd be running a flat pattern, and there would be your hot receiver. All right, we're looking for a home run. All right, got picked. All right, again, Showing you how you can convert empty, all right, to a six-man protection, a five-man protection, all right, to a six-man protection just with motion, if you have that kind of an animal, all right. But more importantly, all right, I'm trying to show you, all right, the protection scheme. Again, three receiver side, all right, over, over here. But there is no threat on this side. There's only two guys on this side. The overload is here. So you see the center redirecting the protection. And he realizes he's got one, two, three, four guys over here, all right? So he's making, all right, a big slide call so that the tackle basically would sift whichever of these two guys came. All right, these four are responsible for those four on that side right there. Again, typically, all right, against this set, uh, what most people try to do is force the hot. So, you know, they'll give you a six-man rush. It's a known six-man rush. All right, you know where the heat's coming from. All right, and that's why you got to have the hot built in. Uh, one of the things that's nice about this that uh, uh, we felt, uh, you take a look at this, first and ten, all right, two things here. I'll tell you, first and ten, <clears throat> you line up with regular people. You go out with your two regular backs, your three, your tight end and two wide receivers, and then you shift to this. What you've done is you force the defense not to be able to make any substituted, all right, defensive front. They got to stay with their regular people, all right. And you can have some real advantages if they want to play zone, all right. Uh, but uh, this is, all right, uh, a consistent way to defend it if you don't want to play coverage, as uh, force the hot. And uh, you just got to make sure everybody's on the same page. All right. Uh, first and ten, I'll take a six-yard gain. All right. Again, six in the, uh, six in a box. All right. Another variation. All right. Of a six-man rush. All right. But again, safeties come down. They, we know what's happening. We're going to fan the two. Look over here. We're solid. We're hot off of that guy right there. All right. Throw the hot again. Uh, they're back-to-back -back plays, all right, two different uh, pressure looks, all right, same result, all right. Again, all right, <clears throat> protection. Here's a three-receiver side. Where are you protecting? You're protecting on the back side first, all right. This guy right here should be fanning to that side right there. He's got a dual read, all right, right to left. We're hot off of that guy right there. Again, so you saw two different six-man looks. This guy right there should be looking right here. Now, my only thing I would tell you, he started out there. You see the point? Started out there, he saw this guy going to middle field. So he said, all right, middle field safety, that guy's not going to come. All right, I say to you, all right, any time that situation occurs, all right, I call that, all right, an iffy. You get in an iffy situation, at the very minimum, what you do is you go to your Liz I call it a, a soft Liz technique. Just sit back, all right, make sure that you're scanning. All right, you really don't have a pickup, all right? These three have these three, unless the center redirected to that side right there. But, you know, this guy's clearly inside of the, of the uh, slot receiver, and his demeanor tells you he's going to come, all right? So uh, the demeanor should have overridden uh, right, uh, the middle field safety mentality. But... Uh, it did it, all right. What you see on tapes, what you're coaching. So I didn't do a good job with that, all right. Now again, I think uh, one of the things that you keep in your hip pocket, just like that shovel pass, they want to keep blitzing you with this thing right here, all right. Uh, then you got uh, the ability, all right, to throw, all right, the slip screen. And what we did. Uh, uh, we packaged it uh, with a double slip. Anytime he made the call, I, uh, they both ran slip on either side, and the uh, quarterback had the opportunity to take the best look side. I think that slip screen goes hand in hand with this uh, empty formation right here. Uh, 
again, all right, got an overload situation in here, all right, uh, so hey, we're matching overload with overload right here, all right, keeping the maximum people in uh, that we can, obviously just didn't do a good enough job, all right, with the technique here. Again, I want you to look at the protection, all right, it's a big slide, we've got one, two, three, four, five guys here, all right, and these five will take care of these five. If we hadn't made the adjustment, adjusted protection call, the quarterback would know he was hot off of this guy. Hot receiver, you've seen all right, the hot receiver in his side there. All right. Uh, pretty interesting call down here on the three yard line. All right. Uh, Again, this guy was not backed up on the slot, all right? So you take a look at it, because we come out in a hurry on this thing, all right? This guy's not backed up on the slot, so you got one, two, three, four, five guys, all right? This is clearly, all right, not a slide situation, all right? And center made a slide call here. Really what we should be doing is we should have gone solid and we got big on big. No internal pressure, no weak side, all right, pressure look. This guy can't come, he's not backed up, all right? Backed up situations are here, all right? Uh, so, uh, again, trying to give you a look at basically, all right, uh, the problems and uh, what some of the calls are, not necessarily what our calls are. Well, uh, the end of that tape also signals uh, the end of this presentation. Uh, it's been uh, enjoyable. Uh, it's been lengthy. Uh, I hope that, as I said earlier, uh, what I do and what you saw here on tape uh, isn't for everybody, I, but I hope that there is some aspect of what we talked about today or what we showed you today uh, that will be able to help you uh, and help your school right, have a better year all right, next year, all right, then you had this year, and if you won five, let's win six, and if you won nine, let's win ten. And uh, I wear this thing uh, on my finger very proudly. Uh, we went to the Super Bowl, all right, uh, in 2003. Uh, we had a disappointing season, and in 2004, I'm looking to go back, all right, to where this, all right, was won. And I hope you all have the same kind of uh, aspirations to have the best year that you can possibly have and that uh, something that we talked about today will help you get there. Thank you very much.